Hello, Snickersnacks. Thank you for joining us tonight with our second night of Delta Green, our fundraiser for the Rainbow Railroad. We're going to be raising funds all week and we're going to be playing Delta Green all week. They are vaguely connected one shots. So you should try to watch all of them because they're all going to be awesome. And tonight I have a spectacular cast. And we will be introducing them shortly. But tonight, uh, the prizes given away during our event are a commission set of dice uh, by me, which means that if you win it, you get to decide on the type of dice and if there's anything in them, what colors you want, that sort of thing. I, I, I enjoy doing it. I mod duck dice. And we'll also be giving away a couple of PDFs then session. So stay tuned for the entire thing because otherwise you won't know if you won. Uh, we normally have a schedule, but this week we're all doing Delta Green. So keep an eye on Borple Tail social media on Twitter and Instagram to see what the schedule is for next week and beyond. Now I would like my players to introduce themselves and their characters and let us know how you were recruited, please. I'm not nervous. Uh, hello, uh, I am Savannah. You can find me online as Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, and I will be playing um, non-agent name Gigi. <laughs> uh, she is uh, employed uh, by the Space Force. Uh, she's a, a specialist with a uh, pilot in mechanics. She's very smart, probably too smart for her own good with degrees in engineering and physical science. Uh, and she copes with that smartness by drinking. Um, she is recruited by Delta Green um, by, she probably, she saw something during, uh, an exercise mission that she probably shouldn't have, um, and, um, instead of, like, keeping it to herself like she probably should have, uh, she asked some questions and... My dog is trying to protect me from the gremlins. Um, and uh, was uh, shown that she has some aptitude to not freaking the fuck out um, and has been fairly successful. She's gone on one mission um, and tonight will be her second. Milo. Uh, that's me. Hi. Uh, my name's Mare. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Oh Hello Mare. Uh, but tonight I'm going to be playing Milo. Uh, Milo's just, uh, you know, just your average guy. Played on the soccer team in college. Decided to go and say, hey, I mean, I'm a pretty athletic guy. Uh, and he went in um, with his degree in anthropology and went on with a master's with that and then ended up getting himself some work through the government, particularly with the FBI, uh, particularly on different, um, has worked with things like terrorism and many things like that. Just kind of like when you need to know people and he's just a kind of guy who knows people. So uh, yeah, and out in the weird world of the government, you see some things and you're like, hey, I could publish a paper on that, maybe go for my doctorate. And then they say, no, you can't talk about that. In fact, we'd like to talk with you about something. Now I've got a cool different badge that I can't show people all the time. But uh, yeah, so, got to go. Hello everyone, I am Aaron. Uh, you can find me at everywhere is pretty much great to do. Um, I pronouns are any except he, him. Uh, tonight, 
I'll be playing Dr. Elise Gates, she, her, um, uh, whose first exposure to the weird wide world of the Cthulhu mythos was when some bodies came in from a certain Tilling Hass presentation with enlarged pineal glands to the point they burst from their forehead. And after that was recruited in Delft Green. Uh, she's gone on no, no missions yet. <laughs> She's as green as they come. Uh, and I think that's me, right? Yes. Hi. Uh, so, hello, I'm Selkie. I am back with Out of Vengeance because I love these people and I would never hold it against them and it's not their fault I wasn't here. Um, I use she, they pronouns. Uh, tonight I'm going to be playing Rowan who uses she, her pronouns. Um, Rowan is a historian with a proficiency in the late 1600s diaspora of European settlers. Um, and she kind of stumbled into the supernatural accidentally on purpose. Uh, in her spare time, she likes to collect old, um, you know, old vintage books as one does when they're a historian because they don't have anything better to do with their time, evidently. I don't know. Um, and she finally found a book that kind of bit back in a way that it wasn't supposed to. Uh, and instead of returning to sender, she tried to return to government. And well, we're here now, folks. Um, this is her first mission ever, and boy, how does she to show it. And uh, that is it for me. Hi, that's uh, my turn. So uh, hi, my name is uh, JT Rudel. I go for by uh, Rudel for short. Uh, pronouns are for both me and the character that I'm playing tonight are he, him, and I'm playing Jared. Jared has a criminal background and committing heists, taking from the rich, giving to the poor. Also has a daughter that he tends to. And basically one day while committing a heist to get goods to his community, he got caught up in a supernatural occurrence, which uh, the... Uh, I, government entity that he came in contact to, into with uh, while he was committing the heist uh, basically picked them up after they realized that he was able to see the supernatural object that he was uh, coming in contact with and he was either given the choice of either going to prison for the rest of his life and not seeing his daughter again or uh, joining this uh, supernatural organization who's uh, basically uh, key is to fight these supernatural causes and uh, things that are coming amiss so um basically he decided to go ahead and join the organization so he can have another chance to see not only his daughter but um to bring things back to his community so that's who i'm playing tonight happy to be here and uh thanks for having me hey fantastic and tonight we are joining our cell a portion of the sort of rogue part of delta green delta green you can play it two ways. You can play it as y'all are official agents with like, you know, real serious government backing, but we're playing it rogue. So some of y'all probably work for different government organizations, but that's your day job. This is what you do when you're called in. You don't have a official capacity other than what you're willing to lie about or say, yeah, I'm FBI, and hope they don't ask if you're here on FBI business, because you're not. But you are part of our cell, so please, if you haven't already, select a agent name or sort of cover that starts with the letter R. If you'd rather just go by your character's regular name, that's fine too. And I need someone to volunteer to be the cell leader. If no one does, I pick Ruby because Ruby has survived a previous mission. It looks like I got voluntold by the handler. <laughs> Nathan, you, you can do this. You're wonderful. Look at you. You've been here the whole time. You're great. Uh, okay. It's fine. <laughs> Should I mention that I, I, most of the last mission, she was in a pile of blankets drinking? I wouldn't have mentioned that, but I mean. It's fine. It'll be fine. It'll be great. I, I 
serve as leader in memory uh, of my buddy John. May his flask rest in peace. Yeah. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, I am the leader. All that really means, don't don't worry about it too much. All it really means is that you're contacted by your handler and they give you specific directions and then rely on you to relay that. <laughs> uh, you don't have to go through relaying it all in character or you can. We'll see how you feel once I tell you everything. Okay. All right. So tell me, what is Roby doing at 2 a.m. on a Thursday morning? 2 a.m. on a Thursday morning. Um, she has a, a very empty six pack sitting on her um, coffee table. She has her English Springer Spaniel Hickory laying by the couch next to her while she is just like aimlessly flipping through channels and she probably has now landed on some random sh like late night show on the history channel um it might be ufo conspiracies for all she knows um she's just vibing with her dog on the couch okay. <laughs> drinking uh, the last of her six pack does ruby not sleep much or does ruby only go to bed after killing a six pack um <laughs> depends on what's been happening this particular week um maybe too many memories from her last mission um but she's definitely been killing more of a six pack than normal uh and then she is um dosed enough so to speak to go to sleep okay well i'm gonna regret that later <clears throat> All right, so you're almost six beers in, yeah. and you might have had more than that during the day. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind as you feel not your normal phone, but the burner phone that you're supposed to keep on your person literally at all times. You're in the shower, it's supposed to be on a shelf next to you you're at work it's supposed to be in a back pocket this is the important phone yeah it goes off and one of the few programmed numbers in there comes up and it says q what do you do um <clears throat> she kind of bolts up in her couch um runs to the kitchen splashes a bunch of water in her face like just takes one deep breath exhales collects herself answers the phone <clears throat> agent agent ruby good evening evening morning it's five o'clock somewhere mm-hmm I've got a mission for you and your team. You can meet me at the local Waffle House, the one around the corner. You should be able to walk. I don't want you driving right now. Fair. What time? Now. I'll see you there. Hangs up. What does Ruby do? Uh, she looks at her clothes to see if she has spilled anything on herself. Um, puts on her combat boots that are next to her door. Uh, kisses her dog on the forehead uh, and walks over to the Waffle House. Okay. Uh, it's 2 a.m. There's not a whole lot of people here, but there are a couple, you know, people on road trips, people who work odd hours. And... Mm -hmm a really exhausted looking wait staff. Yeah. And then you see Q, someone that you have met maybe once before, 
she's sitting at a corner booth where she can see everything and she just has a mug of coffee in front of her and a manila envelope and she just has her hands folded on the manila envelope and looking straight ahead <clears throat> uh ruby goes up to that booth and kind of like unceremoniously like slides in on the other side Evening, Ruby. Evening. So what's come up? And she slides you a file. I've dropped the pertinent information in the Google Doc that I shared earlier with you. Bless you. <laughs> uh, it's titled <clears throat> Info File. And everyone can look at that so that you all don't have to try to take notes about that. All right. So she slides you the manila. Where did you sit in relation to her? Um, she's in a corner. You said the corner booth? Yes. Um, she probably slid in probably a little bit further than she meant to. So she's kind of like edging on the middle of the corner booth. <clears throat> so she slides you the manila folder and waits for you to open it before beginning to speak. What you see inside the folder is a list of names. You see the name Pablo Carlson, Sue Cannon, Shane Lambert, and Andre Lambert. And once she sees you, thank you. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> once, once you see, uh, once she sees you open the folder and start reading, mm -hmm. just, can you see straight enough to read it? Yes, ma'am. Good. <clears throat> And the waitress comes up and she stops talking for a second and just says, get her a black coffee. Waitress goes away. And she says, these are missing individuals local to the area. Pablo Carson was reported missing by his husband, Matthew. They have a sweet little boy. Misses him dearly, I'm sure. He was last seen on a camera at a local pizza joint picking up a pizza for his family on the way home. Sue Cannon was reported missing by her sister. And there is a picture in the folder with a sort of starry eyed looking young woman with a uh, holding like a college diploma. Looks like she's a recent, recent graduate. She was last seen at a local gay bar called Loud and Proud. Shane Lambert, and their boyfriend, Andre Lambert, are missing. Shane was reported missing by their coworker. A cop did a wellness drive-by, but since both cars were in the driveway and no one answered and there was nothing obviously amiss, couldn't legally go in and do anything but we have included them on this list. All of these individuals are missing. Sue went missing first, then Pablo, then Shane and Andre. And uh, Q looks at you and says, these are all members of the local queer community and we're assuming that there's probably others missing that we just don't know about yet. So assume that there's more. Your mm -hmm. job and your crew, and then she slides you another manila envelope with the basic info of these individuals. And she also slides you a second burner phone. Okay. Your job is to see what you can find about their disappearances, locate them if possible. Um, 
just to clarify, Shane and Andre, their last known whereabouts were just at home. Yes. Okay. I will uh, get to texting. Remember to be careful what you uh, put in writing. We never know exactly who's watching or listening. As the millennial Ruby is, she shudders at, I guess I'll call them then. Human contact, how awful. Sometimes. <clears throat> and she looks at you and makes sure to make eye contact with you and says, if you hear anything about a, I'm looking for the name, a Samuel Whalen, call me. Okay. In the burner phone, you've got the numbers of your new cell. You are as responsible for them as anyone is going to be. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> um, nope, I, I got this. I hope so, because you're all we've got. And then she slides you uh, a wallet that if you flip it open has a bunch of random cards in it, like a lot of different credit cards and that sort of thing, and a envelope full of money. It says, there's missing people. One of them has a kid. Try to find him if you can. You got it. And then she finishes her coffee. It's still steaming, but that doesn't stop her. <laughs> and then she gets up and unceremoniously leaves. Um, Ruby waits for her coffee to come. <clears throat> um, puts like a five on the table. Um, drinks it and um, we'll head back to the privacy of her apartment to make those phone calls. Brian ears and all. Uh, so, uh, let's see. There's one, two, three, there's four. <laughs> Who am I calling first? <laughs> uh, Elsie? Is that... You're Elias, sorry. Elise. Elise. Lord have mercy. Everyone Francosis. tell it. Francosis. Pronounced Francosis. <laughs> oh. okay. Tell me one more time. Elise. Elise. I know it should be self explanatory, but my brain is not on full cylinders. And so, okay. Uh, you are lucky number 2 30 a.m. phone call. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> she uh ring ring <laughs> i think uh i think elise like has a set to but like her vibrate cracks an eye open picks it up and then like slips out of bed quietly to not wake her partner uh and steps out into the hallway hello you're needed agent okay where Am I going to make everybody meet at the Waffle House again? <laughs> That's up to you. Um, you've done a mission before, but you haven't worked with these specific individuals previously. So you yeah. wouldn't necessarily have a specified meetup point. Yeah. Um, do I have like an office in the city that I could like have them meet at? 
uh, would your character have an office? Because Delta Green no. wouldn't give you anything. Yeah, no, uh, she's a fucking mechanic. <laughs> she, you could have um, a your out of shop, but uh, well, she's not that type of mechanic. She works on spacecrafts. Um, um, Waffle House, three a.m. I'll be there. What horror is what we see at 3 a.m. in the Waffle House? <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Rowan gets called next. Ring, ring. Selfie. Yes. Sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I thought you said Rowan and I wasn't sure. And I'm like, is someone else going to say something first? Um, but we're going to go with the fact that Rowan answers the phone with the same amount of confusion because she's probably been asleep for two hours. Uh, <laughs> just reaches for the uh, sixth cup of tea that she has let go cold in the day. It just throws it back as she answers the phone and is like, yes, hi, hello. Agent Rowan? Presumably. Uh, we'll Agent deal Blair. with your confidence in shoes later. Uh, you're needed. Right now? Yeah, 3 a.m. Waffle House. Be there. Why are we meeting at a Waffle House? Fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. Which Waffle House? <laughs> the one on the corner of Main and 3rd. Oh, we're downgrading. All right, that's fine. Either way, I will meet you there. I'm coming. I promise. She As she like, hangs up the phone, up. she's like, that's the one next to my house. How is that? And whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Milo. <laughs> ring, ring. Phone buzzes. He's asleep on the couch. Same thing, TV on, just kind of there. As soon as the phone buzzes, his dog Roscoe just starts barking. His big black lab just, just with the big deep woof, woof, woof. And he's just like, ah, it's all right, gotcha. And then like flips open the phone. Yellow. And Agent like, Roger? Roger that. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. Uh, you're needed. Okay, great. Yep. And then he's like, Come on, Roscoe, hold on real quick. And you uh, can hear the screen door opening so he can take the dog out to go pee while you do. All right, great, cool. Stuff going on. Uh, Where? Waffle House, 3 a.m. <laughs> nice, all right. I'll see you there. Well, wait, 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 wait. The good one or the uh, one? The one on main. Oh. <laughs> Good memories there. All right, I'll see you there. He closes the phone. Ruby's starting to think she needs to move now. <laughs> uh, last but certainly not least, Agent Garrett. Ring, ring. All right, so uh, Jared, who's currently sitting in his. Uh, after tucking his daughter in, I uh, was going to wait for the very last ring and reluctantly pick up the phone. Yeah, what do you want? Oh, aren't you chipper? Bar calling me pretty early in the morning. Who is this? Agent Ruby, you are needed. Or what am I needed for? I'll tell you when you show up at 3 a.m. at the Waffle House on Main. Uh, no thanks. I already had dinner tonight. That's not an option, Agent. Fine, I, I'll be there. But as long as I get back home before my daughter needs to go to school. Sorry, Agent. I can't guarantee that you are on shift as of right now. Okay, I'll go ahead and meet you there. And your- Jared's gonna go ahead and hang. Okay, like she's in the middle of saying, call your babysitter. <laughs> See, he <hangs> up. <laughs> He's going to then uh, proceed to walk to his uh, daughter's room, open up the door, 
take a look at her as she snuggled up in bed with her uh, teddy bear. Uh, mouth to himself, love you. Uh, Clarively close the door. Then uh, write a letter to his mom, who is also staying with him, who watches his daughter from time to time since he does not, um, his wife, he does not have a wife. And he's going to basically leave a note to his mom saying, Ma, I'm heading out. <laughs> Take care of young Rosie for me. And then he's going to go ahead and uh, leave and make his way towards the Waffle House. Lovely. Uh, so I'm going to go through my uh, agents and ask them what they do before or on their way to the Waffle House. And Jared, I'm going to start with you. Do you do anything else other than described? Or do you just head right on over? Do you drive? Do you walk? Do you take public transit? Agent Jarrett? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he's actually going to take the uh, public transportation and bus that uh, runs late. Uh, do you bring anything specific with you? Uh, he brings a uh, keepsake that um, his daughter is known to have one of her uh, bracelets that she made for him for Father's Day, just so he can have, a, have it as a keepsake. And I uh, keep him at, at, at all times to ensure that he doesn't fall off or strive straight off the path of uh, what his main mission is, which is basically get home safe to his daughter and making sure that she's uh, taken care of. Very sweet. Okay, Roger. What do you do after you get that call? Yeah, so uh, after making sure my dog settled in in the crate, because last time went down like this, I had to get a new couch, those are expensive. So uh, he's got the dog in the crate, gets himself ready, but he is going to knowing He's, he's a bit of a greenhorn, both with like the FBI and with Delta Green. So he just kind of sees this as he's like a good, like, you know, he's getting a promotion. So he's going to kind of come a little puffy chested and, and kitted out. So he's put on his little Kevlar vest. He's got his little underneath his, uh, you know, underneath his jacket like this. He's got uh, his issued uh, his gun in place as well, concealed carry. Um, he's got, I had a handful of things actually on my little sheet. Uh, he's got just kind of like a couple of little like odds and ends, like, you know, those little multi-tool kinds of things. The, the little, got like a bunch of different multi-tool stuff on it. Um, yeah, just little odd spots. He's got his wallet on him. And uh, yeah, just kind of starts making his way down. He gets to, he, he gets in his car. He's got like a little Ford something or another. But he's had it since college and he's going to run it into the ground. So yeah, he'll take it. And he'll make his way to the Waffle House. Just kind of walks in with his hands in his pockets. Just scoping out for us. Rowan, what do you do after getting that call? Uh, roll out of bed, grumbling to myself incoherently of why can't the dead just stay down at three in the morning? Why is it always three in the morning? And why is it always, why can't it be before midnight? They are, you know, the, this is completely unacceptable and kind of bustling around the house, uh, grabbing a knapsack, throwing in some uh, maybe a notebook, some research uh, stuff, like th things that one would carry as a historian, uh, yeah. a cell phone, um, probably a water bottle full of tea. Uh, and uh, yeah, probably that's it. Locks up the house, uh, shoves, a, shoves the spares underneath the mat and jumps in their old uh, Volkswagen Jetta and like makes her way to the Waffle House. 
Is your Jetta a stick or automatic? It is an automatic. Elise. Uh, yeah, so I think she showers, um, grabs whatever ID she uses when she's working for Delta Green specifically, because I'm assuming it's not the same one she practices under. <clears throat> uh, and then we'll, uh, whatever kind of generic med kit she has with her, um, she'll load that up. Um, you know, stethoscope, some stitching stuff, like uh, all that fun little odds and ends for when someone gets cut. <laughs> Is Elise used to doing sort of on the fly medical work? I mean, I think she's she's probably not like on call for the ER anymore. Like she's probably that advanced in the career, but she's done that. Um, so of course she's done triage and stuff and stuff like that. So you know how to handle yourself in a tight situation. It's probably gonna be helpful later. All right. So what does this look like when everyone is here? What do you do? I don't I don't get a montage waiting for them. Do you do you want one? I can give you one. I'm just giving you shit, sorry. Okay. I kind of assumed it was you getting dressed. I'll do it for you. You're getting dressed. Make yourself some more coffee. You look at the last bit of that last beer. Do you drink it? Nah agent or handle sorry not agent handler q um put me in charge of something and now she's kind of scared shitless <laughs> so she she'll she's not gonna finish that last beer <laughs> okay um i'm gonna say you probably sober up a little bit um being scared shitless and all yeah uh she probably also does like a quick uh dog walk just around the block yeah <clears throat> right then you walk back over to the Waffle House. Do you try to beat everyone there, or what do you do? Um, she'll probably get there like five minutes to three, um, and probably claim not the same corner booth, but a different corner booth, just to mix it up <laughs> it's the same waitress and she looks at you and she sort of was like is the coffee actually good at 3 a.m yes do you want another uh yes actually get uh can i get five cups and just bring the pot please sure And uh, she goes off to do that. Clearly surprised to see you back again so soon. <laughs> but she's working at a Waffle House at three in the morning. She's not really going to ask a whole lot of questions about the customers. Nope. Waffle House times two. That's what's in my notes. <laughs> it's a really waffle, waffle house. <laughs> All right. So... I'm going to go back through the order again. Uh, Agent Robin Hood, what do you do when you arrive? All right, so he's going to walk through the door, uh, look around to see if he can spot whoever he needs to find. So is there other people inside the Waffle House? Uh, there's a couple. Some people that are just, you know, there and they're clearly focused on eating and getting out and doing what they need to do and you see an individual sitting at a corner booth with five mugs of coffee and a pot on the table in front of her okay before he gets to that individual he's gonna basically walk by each table and basically uh basically signal to them that he's here for uh whatever calls while being the track and uh before he gets to that agent. So basically walk up to each of the there and be like, oh. Your sound cut out? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I'm here for service. 
Pardon for duty. Each and every one of them looks up and says, <laughs> and he's going to slowly back away as uh, from his table <laughs> until he gets to the uh, last day where Ruby's at. <laughs> you do get Ruby. one that stands up and shakes your hand and says, "Thank you for your service." Before sitting back. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby is watching Agent Robin Hood do this, and she's just like, I really hope I don't get in trouble for this. <laughs> All right, so whenever he gets to the uh, table where Ruby's at, he's going to um, say uh, to her, basically saying, well, <clears throat> I'm ever service. Are, are you the one who I'm looking for? I've already went through this a couple times, and, you know, it didn't really work out. Um, yeah, I'm the one you're looking for. Have a seat. Have a cup if you're brave enough. All right, so he's going to sit down and uh, basically go ahead and take a cup since it's, it is pretty. Uh, go ahead and start sipping on the call. Right. It's probably terrible. It's not fresh. It's the end of yesterday's last pot. You could probably stand a spoon up in it in a really bad way. Yeah. All right. I was going to ask Agent uh, Ruby, so are we getting any waffle? No. It's not good to work on a full stomach. You never know what you're going to run into. And everyone else uh, files in in some various order. Do any of you do anything of note? Or do you... <laughs> Just walk over to the uh, the lady and the gentleman with the uh, unused mugs. M Milo wants a coffee. He's going to go in and get a coffee anyway. He's He drank too much in college, so he can't really, nothing can hurt him, right? So what did he drink too much of in college? everything like you know how you know those you know those things like when you go to like one of those soccer parties and it'll be like the soccer team the swim team every now and then the theater kids show up and then everybody brings something and they just pour it into the bathtub and you drink jungle it. juice got it jungle yeah juice. we called it pj back in the day i don't know why i knew a guy named pj once but yeah either way yeah that's uh that's what we did and it didn't kill me so yeah, the, the coffee's coffee. I'm gonna wake up. Okay. Elise, Rowan, anything of note? Uh, Rowan, or Rowan has spent one too many sleepless nights in diners growing up in undergrad. She knows better than to drink this stuff black. So just an ungodly amount of sugar and cream goes into this. She's, you know, stumbles in wearing bug-eyed shades at 3 30 in the morning because the light's giving her a migraine and she just slides a chair over to the table and plops down no. do you fine. sit down riker style or do you sit down like a normal person do you cross your legs cross her ankles how do you sit riker <laughs> is the proper way to sit down i, don't know I mean my about. toddler agrees with you <laughs> i'm gonna get hate for this what is riker style I told you I was going to get angry for Star Trek. What I is mean, Riker style? Uh, you you, you sit Star down Trek. with the back of the chair against your chest and then oh, one leg so, on either side. Okay, so <gasps> just yeah, just disgruntled teen style. Oh, you take the whole leg and put it over the chair. Yeah, he's, he's a really it. tall guy, so he literally swings his entire. You gotta leg take the, the whole chair. leg over the back of the chair, like. If Rowan's not doing it, Roger's me. doing it. So we're, yes, <laughs> we're gonna swing the whole leg burlesque style, Christina Aguilera swinging the leg over the side. And it goes with the, I mean, honestly, with the bug eyed glasses and the extra creamy coffee, it all just kind of fits together. So this is someone who has never grown up, but is somehow somehow either bluffed, bullshitted, or uh, just completely rocked at school and somehow made it. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here, folks. Um, yes. That Riker style is how she sits on the chair. All right, we we really need to get you to watch some Star Trek. We'll mediate that. I promise. Uh, Elise, anything of note? 
Uh, no, I think she uh, comes in with her bag and like a coat, and then like as she sits down, pulls out like a Java monster. She is not drinking the shit from the waffle house. <laughs> <laughs> you Smart. do get a dirty look from the waitress, but she's sure not going to say anything because she doesn't drink it either. <clears throat> Smart. Smart. All right, Ruby, you have your cell with you. What do you do now? Um, um so Ruby um brings out the file and she's like I guess first off um who's new so to speak uh this is my first field assignment cool 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 damn this is my first time here okay damn please but I'm here yeah she like dead eyes robin hood she's like i don't need you to tell me um <laughs> and then she like glances over to roger and roger's kind of kicked back and just like oh, well i mean i do some adjacent work to this uh you know outside of you know this type of situation so it's not really like my first time but maybe like my first time with like this badge but not with another one got it you try too hard okay uh it's not trying too hard if you get the job done i'm just saying sure um i am agent rudy R rudy i'm rudy now i have a rudy vader um <laughs> noted uh, your name is now rudy yes <laughs> um so we have been called into action to find um, missing um, queer community members. Um, and she kind of like passes starting to the left, um, the one file. So Sue went missing from a bar Pablo went missing from picking up pizza, and Andre and Shane went missing from their homes. Um, so we believe that there are more missing persons, but they have yet to be reported. So. I mean, other than the fact that they're missing, what do we know about them? Like, where they went missing from? What I just said. Just that. There is video footage available of, uh, the last known video footage of Pablo available. There's some kind of security footage of Sue, but it's a club, so you can't really see much. And there's nothing on Shane and Andre. Well, oh, shoot. I should have. This is an out of character thing. I will just send you a message privately. Um, but yeah, she just hums and nods along with what you're saying and looking over the folder. <clears throat> so does anyone here have particular aptitude to computers? Hacking? I almost put something in SIGINT and then I didn't. <laughs> Remember that time? Whoops. Remember that time that I almost was useful? What? Remember that time when my other character would have been real useful, but real odd in this group? <laughs> I would have loved her anyway. Uh, so uh, if no one has uh, computers or anything in that particular vein. Wait, uh, I'm going to look. What kind of map? Uh, like a like a street map, like a road map, like a yeah road map. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, essentially, my rule is if it's something that makes sense, you can have it. If it's something that I'm like, I don't know, I'll let you roll a percentile die. High okay. you have it, low you don't. Okay. Uh, so do you want me to so? Do I say we have the map and you want me to you roll? You have the map. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. So um, Rowan, uh, Rowan kind of elbows the glasses out of the way um, and unfolds like a city map and is like, okay, where did these people go missing? And can we mark it on the map? to see if there's any correlation to that. Do we have addresses? You would be able to find the addresses of these locations pretty easily. Uh, and Shane and Andre, their home addresses are in there. And the address of the pizza place and the address of Loud and Proud. Okay. So yeah, you map those out and give me a first roll of the game. Mm -hmm. Give me intelligence, just a straight intelligence roll. Ooh, she's good at that. I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> We're doing it live, folks. Yeah. So you want to roll under your intelligence stat. So chances are you're going to pass and just Break you in, you in a little bit. So where it says, so it says statistics, score, and then times five. Do I want under that or where is the end? You want under the times five. The time, oh, perfect. Oh, that's super easy. Mm -hmm. I got under. All right. So what you gather from that is Pablo was on probably on his way home from work. Uh, Sue, you're you're not sure. Uh, you have her home address, and you have Shane's home address and Andre's home address. Uh, what you do know is that none of them are terribly far from this club. And you can probably guess that they might have all been there at some point or other. Well, you said that like, or the file here says that one of the concerns is that there's other folks missing. If they're all a part of the community, then if we go and talk to the folks over at Loud and Proud, they'd be able to tell us, you know, if have they had problems with this before? Okay. So audience, I was just given some very interesting information by the voice of God. Don't give him that much power. Oh. It's a voice that only I can hear. It's a voice of God. <laughs> so, uh, strap in. And I like it. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. oh, look at that. I suddenly have forgotten that I need to go take my uh, pet <laughs> for an enema. Um, I wow. Have oh my gosh, look at that freckle. Wow, is it really that uh, <laughs> Butts in the chairs, people. <laughs> Butts in the chairs. Okay. Um, it's 3 a.m. The bar is long past closing time. Are you kidding? What bars have you gone to? The bars that close at 2 because that's when last call is. I, I, I live in Buffalo. Last call is 4. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm well, from I live California. In... Last call is 2. Yeah, I live in North Carolina. Last call is 2, but many of them just shut down at like 10 because they can. We all know there's nothing to do in Buff Buffalo that isn't drinking at 4 a.m. on a Tuesday night. Get okay. on. I want to go to Buffalo. Right? Well, okay, <laughs> then. Um... Visit me. <laughs> um, but for this, I'm, go I'm going to declare that the uh, it's probably going to be closed by the time you get there. So this isn't the time to swing by it, probably. But it should be on our list of places. Well, we could at least, like, yeah, we could do that. I guess we could see if it's just sketchy around there, too. Um, let's see. I can... <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. Automod is just losing its mind with chat tonight. Yes, it is. I'm happy with us adults. <sighs> okay. So, um, I'd like to, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to say, um, Handler. I would like to review the footage from, um, Pablo and Sue using alertness to see if I can see any similarities like the same car, the same van, the same potential person that was in the two places. Okay. Give, so I'm going to ask you to give me, I think it's an alertness roll. Okay. That's uh, what I was asking for. Yeah. Uh, so the the footage is available I'm trying to decide how esoteric this is uh flash drive no floppy disk uh okay. no mm. how mean do i want to be it's a floppy disk i've been told to make you cry uh so you're gonna have to find <laughs> a computer uh, but since you are a surviving Delta Green agent, you probably have one at home that you can use. Okay. Um, she, like, looks around the table. I might regret this, um, but um, follow me. She leaves, leaves a 20 on the table, um, and she leads them back to her apartment. Bold. Yeah. Hickory and I can move anytime. It's fine. <sighs> Uh, where she probably like rummages in the top of her closet and pulls out a floppy disk reader. <laughs> I know yeah, they I like know used exactly. to be in the computers, but like I'm assuming they had like a solo. They do. I've, I've used them for work. Um, yeah. And you essentially just it's it looks like a small VCR essentially. Yeah. It, all it's used for is the floppy disk. Yeah. And you hook that up to your actual computer and read okay. it that way. Do you, do you also have a com com commander, a Commodore 4700 hanging out in that closet? It's a computer. Uh, no. It's it's an old it's an old person joke. Never mind. Damn, I think you just aged yourself, Silky. I can't be the only person in this chat or in this game that knows what a Commodore is. I do. I know, but that might not help you. <laughs> I don't know if that helps you. Fine. So I'm just gonna sit over here with my old person jokes and my old yep. person time and let you Oh 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 stolen fires is I know. So there you go. Uh I was just trying to do math and it was a problem for me, but And Spank My Betty says I had a Commodore back in the Stone Age. <laughs> All right, so okay. what was that roll? Eighteen. On a 70. Assuming that's so. under your alertness. Yes. Uh, if it wasn't, you'd, you'd have a hard time with a lot of things. Uh, yeah, I think I would be really bad at my job. <laughs> okay. So what you notice is uh, he enters camera frame and it's mainly focused on like the small front room where you go to pick up the pizza. It's not a sit down type of place. It's you go and you pick up the pizza, you leave. Mm-hmm. And you see Pablo walk in, and he is waiting, pick up the pizza, and a woman comes in. And, and she rushes in and looks very nervous, and you see her just kind of grab the front of Pablo's shirt and there's no sound but she looks very agitated and scared mm -hmm. and she uh, asks him something and sort of frantically gestures outside and he uh, l looks worried and follows her and it looks like he's pulling out his phone as he does so uh, you go back to look at that little bit of footage again and his shirt is a very clean white color and her hand on it it looks really dirty and 
it's more than just dirt under the nails. It looks green around the tips. And when you notice that green, you sort of start to see there's like a little weirdness in her hair, not like hair coloring, but it looks more like moss. It's it's odd. It could be a very new witchy fashion statement, um, but it's something of note. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Got and that down. yeah. And uh, I'll, you rolled well, so I'm going to say that carries over for Sue as well. Okay. Uh, like I said, it's a club. Yeah. You don't get a whole lot of detail, but you do see that she goes to the main bar. It's a large enough club that there's like a big main bar in the center, then a couple smaller around the room. Uh, but you do see which bar she's going to but you can't see much else other than she goes to the bar she dances goes to the like you know that sort of thing okay but no frantic moss people not that you see um okay um she's gonna make a note to potentially ask if uh, when they do end up going to the club um, to see if maybe the club has a camera outside that that footage wasn't collected or something for whatever reason. Just on the off chance. Potential. So she points this out to um, Elsie who uh, totally reads Doctor. Um, and... Elise. Nope. <laughs> Elise. <laughs> I'm sorry. Elise. Um, who totally... Uh... I feel like we need to get a boost every time that Savannah says a name wrong. <laughs> I was just about to say that. The next time when Savannah gets a name wrong, I'm going to donate 20. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to give my... Sis. Add five points to add five percent to our room. We're gonna need it. Um, I don't want to say names anymore. Like, <laughs> um, Elise. Yes. Um, she points out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> she points out. Um, the, the woman who, uh, has, like, that weird stuff going on with her, um, kind of, like, looks you dead in the eye, like, I, I don't expect you to know what the fuck is going on with this woman, but on the off chance you can make a medical deduction of WTF, um, go ahead. Sure, um... I could probably make a cursory examination from a distance and guess. <laughs> very, very scientific. Super scientific. All right. Uh, give me a medicine roll, please. I'm very good at that, fortunately. That is a 43 out of 80. Yeah, you're very good at that. Uh, so what you notice once it's pointed out to you and you you lean forward and you ask can you zoom in and i'm sure ruby gives you like a deadpan look that you just you know this footage is on a floppy disk i probably <laughs> could like look at it funny it's gonna like fuzz out like Enhance. no <laughs> Enhance. Enhance. No, dog. i'm sorry it's not like the tv shows i can't enhance fuzzy we don't have a budget for that <laughs> But what you do see is that um, you can definitely tell that the green on her is organic and not some kind of makeup. Okay. Um, I'll relay it. Yeah. Um, I, that's definitely her skin um, and not something uh, cosmetic. Okay.
So this isn't like somebody like walked off a set. No, no, I don't. I don't shit. think they're shooting a, a movie nearby. Um, no. You never know. Okay. <clears throat> uh, skin and moss. Okay. Um, how much do I know about the other agents, or just their names and phone numbers? You would be given their names and phone numbers and very basic background. So you know that Roger's day job is working for the FBI. You know that Elise has some kind of medical background. You know that Rowan... uh, I'm sorry. uh, Rowan is a historian? Indeed. And maybe because she turned that book over to the government, you have the title of the book. (laughs) Uh, But um, it's in a language you can't read. Cool. Maybe like really some kind of old school Middle Eastern language that you can't read at all. Uh, And you know that Agent Robin Hood has some kind of criminal past. Am I remembering that correctly? Yep, that's correct. So that's all you really know. You know probably the basic skill sets. Okay. Um, looks so. Both Andre and Shane are gone, which means their house would be unattended. Looks over at Agent Robin Hood. So how good are you at breaking into houses? Well, it's part of my specialty. Cool. Who wants to take a ride? I'm to break into a house any day. Let's go. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm assuming we would probably take. No, there's five of us. We could all pile into a, a normal car. Um, I can math. Um. Who has an actual vehicle? Because I definitely don't. Milo does. Yeah. Who can actually drive like a sane person? Uh I've got 20 in drive. I've I've got 40 in drive. Granted, that's the same 20 I was given from the beginning, (laughs) but I've got 20 in drive. (laughs) It's it's straight up. It's a minivan, though. Is that a problem? No. Got uh, my, room. my drive is 60, but I have a motorcycle, so ain't nobody. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you're okay with getting in like the world's like weirdest like Ford Explorer that has a weird smell, like yeah, um, the we, doc can um can can, can take us. Into the van. Uh, why don't you take over? Where are you planning on going? To Shane and Andre's house to break into it to see if there's any clues. Is my, uh, is what I would like to do. But any, any of the other agents is allowed to tell me that I'm wrong and we should do something else. No, I'm thinking that's like a, you know, seems like we're just gonna check it out we gotta scope it out i mean if we're not gonna be able to get into the club okay i was just basically here to break into houses so he's all all right okay and this seems like a reasonable place to take our break a little bit early so everybody i hope you stay with us during break and you tune back in in a few minutes to see how this home invasion goes See you soon.
Hello, thank you for being with us tonight, our second night of fundraising for the Rainbow Railroad. And we are already, already over halfway to our first goal. Woo, very exciting. So keep being awesome. It's a great cause. And I hope you continue to enjoy our story. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be giving out a couple of prizes for some of our uh, donors or people joining us in the chat. We're gonna be giving out a couple of PDFs and a custom set of dice made by me. And now we're gonna get right back into it. Our agents, part of our cell, are going to be breaking into a residence of two missing individuals Shane and Andre, their partners, and we're going to see what they find there. Do you guys do anything on the way? Or do you just go? Maybe just uh, ask them with the radio dial. <laughs> Wait, you mess with the radio dial? How dare? How dare? <laughs> no, I don't care. It's fine. Uh, yeah, if Milo's not driving, Milo is sitting back on his phone playing like one of those like block games. Uh, Robert has just uh, going through social media. Almost. Um, Ruby's probably in the back making some notes, um, probably, uh, looking up, uh, Shane and Andre's social media presence. Okay. So, uh, basic social media, you find that there's a lot of happy pictures of them as a couple. Looks like they've been together for a while. You see something about them looking uh, to adopt a couple of cats. Uh, they were looking forward to meeting one. And the last social media post is from about a week ago. And it's of them at the uh, club Loud and Proud. And they're saying, oh my God, look how cute we are. And it's a sweet selfie of the two of them there. Good. I, while I'm doing this as well, like, it, could I look at news articles, like local news articles on my phone instead of playing my block game? Sure. Oh, you uh, want to do something useful now, do you? I had to beat this level. It's like it resets at 3 a.m. There's also TVs in the back of the headrest if you want to watch something instead. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm good. I thank you, though. Like. I, is this the one that's got like the DVD player in it? Or... It's cool. <laughs> yes, of course this. It's full mom van, but there's no trace of kids at all. Like this is an immaculate looking <laughs> van. I had always van. wanted my mom to have one of these. So he's Alita like just a mom friend. Like I there mean, are no crumbs, no leftover McDonald's fries. There's nothing. <laughs> as an FYI, and I don't think I mentioned this when introducing Milo. Milo is only like about twenty five or six. Oh, baby. Aww. Yeah. So he is, that's why he is like puffing his chest up and trying to like be like the cool dude. Like, I can't, I mean, I'm a part of some really cool stuff, but I can't talk about it. It's classified. I so. mean, in all honesty, he's 25 and working for the FBI. I think that's totally deserved. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's like in there. Well, he was, you know, he, he likes to make it sound a lot cooler than he is. He's an anthropologist. He's usually stuck with a lot of a bunch of like files and fine, but he has a gun. That makes him awesome. Uh, right. But but yeah, no. So he's uh, so he would like to look up uh, news articles to see if he can be helpful. Okay. Uh, so what do you actually search? Um, I'm going to search through uh, kind of like the the news. But, you know, like how they have the news where it's like, you know, these people got arrested. These people got, there was a fire here. There was a break in here. There was all of this. Uh, just trying to see if there's any sign 
of missing persons happening in the news right now, particularly for these folks, but if there's any others as well. You mooted. Thank you. All right, so the only story is uh, related to these four individuals is on Pablo. And there's a really sweet picture of him and his little family. There's him, there's his husband and the sweet little uh, boy that they adopted. And there's a headline about local father going missing uh, and appeals by his husband, Matthew, just, uh, I, I don't think he went missing. The cop, like, oh, I think he went missing. Uh, the cops are trying to tell me that people leave all the time, but this isn't this isn't like Pablo. He wouldn't just run away from us. There's someone has him. Something happened to him. And you do see. Uh, I'm going to say you find a newspaper that has almost like a sort of, uh, like at the bottom of the page, it looks like, huh? Oh, no, I, I was going to ask a question at the end, but go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, ask your question and I'll move on. Oh, well, just because I feel like this is going in the same direction. Can I read the comments? Yeah, sure. On the news article, like to see if there's anything being outspoken about people, like thoughts and prayers or maybe other things? Sure, there's definitely some things like, oh my God, that's awful, I hope they find him. Uh, looks like such a sweet family. And then there's some people are like, come on, like they're never coming back. Why would anyone like, yeah, and just really, I don't want to say any of it, but some negative yeah. things. But so, so that's what I was just trying to get the sense of if there's some distinctly negative things towards them. The family the unit, yes. That family unit, okay. That's what I was trying to, that's what Roger's trying to check out there to see mm -hmm. uh, if, if there's any sort of like those same names across different news articles across similar news articles. Yeah, and like the comment sections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you do see one and it is Moss Man. Interesting. The doc and I both got the susses of faces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Milo's sitting back there and as, as he's going through and he's like yeah man people don't realize it doesn't take much to find you like through these comments i mean like whoever this moss man guy is he's a real jerk he's gonna get that coming for him someday did you just say moss man yeah like this guy moss man saying just some like absolutely heinous stuff like i am going to probably whenever i figure out who he is and i call a buddy and find out his ip address he's never going to be able to fly again um unceremoniously ruby reaches from the back seat and like plucks roger's phone <laughs> careful careful that's an 11. they don't make them like that anymore an iphone 11. yeah right. anyway um she clicks on like the moss man profile from the comment section and like tries to like deep dive <laughs> here we uh, go. did someone say something that i was just saying here we go <laughs> <laughs> uh there's uh rosie doesn't know how these profiles are generally set up but um if it's like for a news article site, um, sometimes it's connected sometimes to your you can, Facebook. Sometimes it's connected to your Facebook. Sometimes it has some basic information, um, an email or like address, a, or a, like a profile pic. It just like kind of depends on what the person like puts out there. Um, usually, the jerks have a lot of 
th- of things connected because they're invincible behind their keyboard. Yep. Uh, so what you see is some fairly hateful stuff. Uh, I'm not going to repeat any of it, but you can use your imaginations. Uh, my imagination is very plentiful for this type of thing, so I'm good. Uh, and then sort of scattered through that, you see stuff about uh, like pictures of him going, oh my god, I found this cool plant. And it looks like he's literally a, a horticulturalist of some sort. Got it. He does not deserve such a cool handle. (laughs) Right. Okay. Okay, so plant guy. Plant guy. Uh, Botany boy. Um, Maybe, but I I prefer moss man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) botany bastard it seems though yeah she takes out a sip out of her rainbow flask from all all the hate (gasps) the rainbow flask she has a copy because obviously the real one was covered in rubble and irretrievable right 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 um okay um i'm trying to decide how stupid this guy is but uh (laughs) I. Is that something we could roll? It's something I would have to roll, and I've already oh. been told that all of my oh, all everything's rolls a success. Succeed. Yeah, you're not. A, no, we don't want to roll anything tonight. Actually, everything <laughs> is just cleverness and awesome. That's right. Um, so I'm I'm gonna say that he's really smart. Um, so you don't get that little extra thing because okay. he's not stupid enough to do that. Uh, ha ha. Uh, but you do get that he's a jackass, uh, and he works with plants. Cool. Jackass plant guy. Got it. Like, someone should not have that cool of a job and be an ass hat like that. That's yeah, it, it really sucks. disappointing. Milo snatches his phone back. <laughs> just in general but also if like we're looking at plant things might try to do that might try to like um yeah try to think of something else okay yeah that works yeah she doesn't try to like hold on to it or anything she she has gotten the information that she wanted um Uh, remind me what roger's background you're an anthropologist Oh yeah, so it was, uh, I was, I kind of, I was, I'd been stuck between them, so I'd done it. So I took the anthropology traits because I had that as far as like, look, his work within the FBI is doing profiling for various groups and, and weird stuff they get up to. I'd had mentally in my head that he was doing that with like terrorist organizations and such, um, but you know, he, he had to go through training, so he's like, I've still got skills. Uh, but uh, like I said, things of use that he has, he does have through through his training there, or which is really where I put some of my bonus points. He had stuff in human, so human intelligence. I don't know if that has anything, not that I want to roll against you, but <laughs> just thinking in a logical sense right now, as far as how he could be helpful. Uh, are you you're muted yeah. the handler so, uh the way you've described uh your character i don't think you would notice this um okay, okay. Mostly because i don't want to crush you and i'm you know um but... okay <laughs> herd herd handler <laughs> i'm not too far from my breaking point so we'll just kind of hold on <laughs> Uh, you'll probably hit it soon enough. Uh, does anyone else do anything on the drive? 
Um, I well, so we 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 know in there the the info we have on them. They're all part of the queer community, right? Mm-hmm. And then they just mentioned the lovely comment section. Not that it's a surprise. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think at least be like, um, you know, not that I doubt our handlers' um, judgment, but are we sure this is something weird and not just some people being shitty? Given. Um. Probably both, honestly. Um, I think that at least the fact that of these four names we have, we only have one that has any sort of acknowledgement of their disappearance is telling in and of itself. It's all like, you know, you see stuff like this and it's your brain immediately thinks cover up, it thinks something whether or not it's something on a bureaucratic end, they're going to do something like that. I mean, historically, law enforcement has not been allies, so I'm not surprised they aren't doing shit. Well, it's just this idea. It's just that even they were bold enough to say that people leave all the time. I mean, if you just adopted someone, you're not going to leave. That's that's not a thing. I mean, I mean, do we have all the fun. information at law enforcement? I guess we could try to get into that. I, I'd i have to use my credentials for our particular organization and not my personal credentials, but I do have the means to me pull their records, check mental health, physical health, that kind of thing, to kind of rule out the, they just left. Um. Yeah, I guess we can go that route. Let's see what we find at the house first. Um, sure. Yes, let's yeah, break okay. into the house before we call our bosses. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I am your boss. So I'm not going to call me. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Does right. anyone else call I have <laughs> I have been instructed to only call our handler in a very specific circumstance, so, and that hasn't happened. I have it underlined six times in my notebook. (laughs) (laughs) All right then, boss. Uh, Let's get to the house. You guys arrive at the Lambert home. It's a cute little suburban uh, house. It looks like it's probably big enough for two people. It's well cared for. The lawn is immaculate. It's just a nice little neighborhood. But you're showing up in a minivan at like 3.30 a.m. So, um, because it's a nice enough suburb it I'm gonna say that no one's really awake at this time like yes. there's there's not a crazy person sitting down on their lawn watching for anything um I'm assuming that everyone's asleep maybe I don't know I should roll I'm gonna roll. Why do you, why are you rolling? You know, you know you're going to see, succeed. It's an immediate success. <laughs> but this is like one of those things. It's like, how do I define a success? Um, it's going to be over 100, whatever it is. <laughs> um, so you see, uh, you pull up, you park. You see someone standing across the street looking at you and they look like kind of pissed. They're squinting at you and they've got like their dog on a leash and the dog is using the front yard. But you've definitely been seen by one of the neighbors and they're just glaring at you because it's it's way too early to have your brights on in driving down a suburban street like that. That's wow. Um Let's see. We do have a couple of bonuses that have been paid for, especially uh, Selkie has a shit metric ton of bonuses. Um, how's your bureaucracy, Rowan? 
Uh, my bureaucracy is actually spot on. That's one of the things she's good at, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you should go smooth the dog walker. <laughs> Check that. It, my my bureaucracy isn't too bad. It's it's less than I thought it was, but it's better than I thought it was. Uh, it's a forty. So well, you also have a plus forty, which would make it an eighty for this roll. Um, I've got a fifty, so I can assist also. I've got okay. persuade. There's something I would. So I could. I also think I have persuade. Well, yeah, the roll would de- persuade. The role would depend on how you approach it. So I'm going to want you to just either start talking to them and I tell you what I think is appropriate or describe to me what you want to do. Uh, and then I tell you which one I feel is more appropriate. So part of me wants to act as if um, I'm some kind of relative or house care house watcher person um there's usually a word for that and i can't think of what it is right now it's a it's house a house sitter, sitter. house sitter a sitter you were really sitter. close I you're know, so close you know it's very I'm, I'm very tired uh so like i could i could pretend to be some kind of relative or a house sitter and potentially look for a spare key in places where people usually keep spare keys uh or i could but i feel like if there's no spare key there because I'm shooting in the dark, um, it would just look even more suspicious. So I suppose I could get out, um, introduce myself as the house sitter, family member coming into, because they have animals, don't they? This is the, these are these are the people who went missing who had adopted the animals? They were talking they, they were about looking adopting a cat. Into adopting a cat. Okay, so I couldn't even, could I possibly, this neighbor's probably nosy enough to know that they don't have a cat. Right. Yeah, because I could smooth it off as that. You could frame um, it as a wellness check. But if we they already know that they're We missing. already know that they're missing. Yeah, people already know they're <laughs> oh, missing. Oh, this is the one. Oh, these are the ones we know are missing. Yeah. These, um, okay. These are the so, one. This is the couple that. Uh, okay. Had the child. She, n- right, so, right. wait, I thought you were going to Shane and Andre's house. I think, is that where we're at? Yes. Shane and Andre are the couple that were considering getting a cat. They're the the younger couple that don't have the kid. Right, correct. Um, So I, for some reason, I can convolute that in my head that they had a kid and were looking to adopt a cat. Um, Separate couples. Maybe I get out of the car. I have, I have Elise turn off, like dim the lights and I'll explain that I'm uh, a cousin coming just to keep an eye on the house, make sure nobody's broken in, stuff like that since they've been missing, maybe water some plants, just to keep do the upkeep on it to make sure it's nice for when they come home. At three in the morning? I live out of state, I just got here. Are, are you gonna be staying at the house? That's the plan, tonight I, we, uh, you, my me and my family got a Airbnb, but I wanted to swing by and just check on check. We just wanted to check on everything because nobody's been up here to check on the house since they went missing. So um, we figured we'd stop by on our way through. Didn't think anyone would be awake to 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 bother. So um, we do apologize really immensely. Uh, and. Uh... This Karen kind of leans around you and watches everybody coming out of the vehicle. And is like, this is uh, my son, Jasper. That's uh, my wife, Rosalie. Uh, this is my my sister, Renesme, uh, and my husband, Edward. Wife, husband? Your wife <laughs> and your husband. <laughs> I'm sorry. And your, yes. your kid that's your age? Oh, she's like 51. Oh, okay. I went with the age that was on the the uh, the thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, Roger takes a moment and just to, like, even. <laughs> Am I Renesme? If you want to be. Or... <laughs> I'll be your sister, Renesme. Here we go. 
Well, um, you're you're all really you're really close. It's, oh. it's, it's complicated. I'm I'm gonna need I... some kind of social role. <laughs> Roger, Roger's gonna Roger wants to 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 talk like to like do hey buddy like to the dog to try and see if the if you know like just hey buddy how you doing like to oh, see if that kind of softens the blow a little bit i hope this is okay my son is very uh he likes dogs yeah oh such a sweetheart where'd you come from you cute uh, little thing my charisma is 65 is that my charisma is 80 i'm not gonna let you roll a base stat for this okay oh. no, no, no. <laughs> what would you like me to roll then persuade uh is there a fast talk in this? I don't think there is no over. fast talk. Fast talk it would yeah, be a give, persuade. Give persuade. Me a persuade roll. Can I assist on the persuade with by talking to the dog? No. Come on! Everyone loves a good dog friend. Uh, the third dog does like you though. <gasps> oh, it's a good boy. Oh, uh, what was that roll, Rowan? I have to roll below a sixty. I rolled a thirty. That is more than enough. Yes. So. Uh, this Karen squints, tugs her dog away, says, just don't, don't leave the car lights on and ever, ever, Oh, absolutely not. Thank you, Jasper. Darling, get the lights, please. You can decide amongst yourselves who's Jasper. I forget who was who. Uh, Jasper was your son, so that's Roger. <laughs> I'm your sister, Renesme, and then the Doc and Robin Hood are your husband and wife. Yes. Apparently. We're either really close or you were really close with the family. Either way, it all works out in the end. Uh, and she goes in and you very much hear the door lock and maybe a devil <laughs> go in place. Um, <laughs> that was and a cute dog. That was a, the dog. Well, I suppose that worked out well for us, but the dog, you go for the dog? At the, at I the mean, de- I would, <laughs> if the dog likes a person, then immediately you know they're good and I'm good mm. with dogs. What would nice. you have done if the dog bit you? Nice. It wouldn't nice. bite me to be scared. Nice. Guys. Yes? Let's just come here what we did to come here to do. Okay. God, That's it's fine. late. And then leave. Let's let's break into our Airbnb. Let me let me grab my kit just in case Mister. someone's in here. Uh, excuse me, I believe you meant Jasper. So let's go. Uh, I said sister. Oh, sister. You. Oh yes, I thought you said Victor. I'm like, there's no Victor here. Oh, like, uh, there is now. There is now. Okay. Um, uh, so Agent actually, Robin, Agent Robin Hood, actually, are you going to be getting our uh, our party into the uh, the Airbnb? Uh, he's gonna go ahead and uh, go into the van. I'll pull out his backpack, and uh, he's gonna go ahead and get uh, started and get working. All right. Uh, give me a roll. Okay. So before he gets uh, started, he's gonna clap his hands together, rub them together, open up his backpack, uh, take out some black paint. This is a whole ritual, by the way. Uh, open the lid <laughs> and basically put his finger into the black paint and uh, rub it across his face like he's on some kind of reconnaissance mission. Pack the black paint away, and is going to go ahead and take all his uh, lock pick tools, and is going to go ahead and. We have a plus forty percent, right? He can. He can use it once. Okay, yeah, I'll like to go ahead and use it now. So I have a uh, fifty-six, not to uh, be below a forty. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. Okay, so you have a fifty-six out of forty. Uh, that is a success. So the door opens and oh, I don't want to be mean, but I have to be mean. They do have a home alarm system that starts, like it gives you that sort of chime that lets you know you have maybe 60 seconds to put in the home code. The code is directly, like not the code, the, the panel to put it in is right next to the front door. What do you do? Do you have enough uh, to maybe pick this? Yes. I I have craft electrical. If you would let me mess with the panel. 
if that's a suitable role for you, Handler. Well, um, I'm fine with that. I just want to give uh, our Robin Hood, a, a, if they have anything for this particular kind of uh, scenario. Scenario. Uh, Robin Hood should, but quite uh, very much so. He's going to look back to the rest of the party. So uh, any you guys know how to disarm this? He's going to point box. <clears throat> um, she, uh, Ruby, in the interest of uh, giving them a chance, she like will look at everyone else. Got anything? Okay, she like pa- uh, walks past Robin Robin Hood into uh, the entryway uh, and starts butting around with panel. And that is a success, a 48 out of 60. The uh, chime stops and you wait a moment. You think you're good. Okay. And she'll like, (laughs) she'll like lead the way. Nice one, boss. Hey, yo, Ruby, we should uh, go on some, uh, you know, breaking in houses sometime. We'll make a good team. I- I'm good, but thank you. All right. So you enter the house. Um, in the entryway, there's not, like, it, the whole thing is very clean and kind of, uh, done up in a very modern sort of uh, simple Scandinavian style. So lots of clean edges, a lot of light colors, not a lot of clutter. So like Hige or Higgy? What's it called? Hi, like Hige? Like Hige? Yeah. Oh, that's a Swedish word. So I'm assuming yes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Brain, brain, brain. All right. So it's a very sort of clean look. There's not extra shoes in the entry hall or anything like that. Uh, There's a little bowl for keys. Uh, The keys are like, if you look in the bowl, you can tell that there's like two sets of car keys, that sort of thing. there's it's a two-bedroom house one of the rooms is made up to be like an office it looks like and you know there's a a nice little kitchen and uh that opens part way up to the tv room but it's not a big house it's just well loved I have a question. Yes. So if the bowl has two sets of car keys in it, where are the cars? In the driveway. driveway. So they are in the driveway. So we pulled up Mm -hmm. behind them in the driveway. Okay. Yes. That's the reason uh, the cop who was called to do the wellness check didn't. Didn't check because the cop, the cars were there. Yeah. Like they're here. It's fine. Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay. Thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. But the, there's no shoes in the entryway. Um, they could be the kind of people that don't just kick them off as soon as they come in. But I, I would believe that. I, I assume those people exist. They they do. It's weird. Um. But what do you guys do? I'm gonna want some perception. I'd love to search. Yeah, I'd love some some roles to see what you guys notice and uh, tell me what you do please so give me your um alertness roles oh alertness or search is there a search there's a search give me search in call of cthulhu it's spot hidden but yeah, yeah give me give me a search role. um do we want to discuss 
a, make a quick yeah, game plan of good. what we all want to do in the house. I want to look for the office. If they have like a home office. I want to look to see if they have like a home office or they like do. a home work area. Yeah. So uh, Rowan will take home office. Uh, Robin Hood will take the uh, bedroom. Bedroom. Okay. Uh. I'll take, uh, uh, if there's multiple bathrooms, I'll take them. Um, okay. Just so I can check medications, all that fun stuff. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Roger is going to check. So we had someone in the office, someone in the bedroom. Roger, Roger's gonna actually do like as, as much of like a clean sweep to see if there's like any like signs of struggle, any signs of like, just oddness he's gonna look like he's very much in like looking for that oddness okay. around that first floor it's a one story right or it is was there two one story just the one uh, all right then that then through that whole living space to kind of see if he can put a story together about these folks um i would like to specifically hone in on points of entry to see um and also like keeping an eye out for unusual plant matter because this whole moss thing has now gotten under her skin so to speak yes. all right sorry i thought i had unmuted myself but apparently not uh anything else before i start asking for roles and descriptions of things. I put on, I have a pair of gloves on me. I'm putting on my gloves because I went to training and I know how to do this thing. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm a freaking doctor. Of course I have gloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Milo came prepared and he makes kind of like a bit of a, a bit about putting on his gloves. Yeah, I think I think I think Elise being a doctor probably has a whole fucking box just like in her bag. <laughs> in her like, purse. <laughs> yeah. Like holds it out to everyone before we start splitting up. Oh, does this have a basement? No. Okay. And does it have an uh, as far as its attic space, does it have a pull down attic or does like one of those pull downs? Yeah, it, it has a pull down attic. Okay, those would be kind of the places that he would look because if there's a backyard access, then Rogers also. So, in, like, if he goes through the living area, he wants to check the attic and he wants to try and check the crawl space, deck, anything where, like, it could be creepy. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, Rowan and then go to Elise and then go to Roger, Robin Hood, and Rudy. All right. Rowan, give me that roll. And what am I rolling up against? Is it search? Easy peasy, search, yes. Easy peasy. And it absolutely was easy peasy, okay. That was a pass. Great. So it's a home office. Yeah, again, more cute pictures. There's some different profiles of cats that they're they're looking at. It's just clearly something that they're very uh they're taking very seriously. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's uh Andre's home office. Mm -hmm. And it Looks like maybe he's a home accountant or something like that. It's very clean, organized. But what do you specifically do or look for? Uh, I guess specifically, um, I mean, take uh, as silly as it sounds, taking into context the things that we have to do with like moss people and disappearances. I guess anything that kind of notably stands out, like if he's a count an accountant, he and unless he, I mean, he obviously has like an invested interest in getting a cat, so him having books about cats laying around isn't going to be unusual. But if he's an accountant and he has a book on like religion or like moss or her, you know, horticulture, 
or anything of that sort laying around, it would be unusual. Theoretically. Yeah. Um, there's or, nothing is, like that. There's a fern in the window, like the, a potted plant. Yeah. But, you know, more sort of the thing that oxygenates the room. Any, any like computer in the room? Can I check? Is it unlocked? Can I check? Uh, there, there's two computers in here. One, like two laptops. One uh, is to the side and with all the stuff organized around it, you can probably figure out it's a work computer. Mm -hmm. And then the one that's more towards the center of the desk and in front of the chair, uh, looks like a personal laptop. There's some fun little stickers on it. Uh, in fact, there's a sticker on it for uh, like, you know, there's different pride stickers and there's a sticker for uh, the, the aforementioned club. And uh, if you want to look at that, you can. Yeah, I mean, I'll give a give a shot, see if their search history pulls up anything unusual. It's okay. not a complete shot in the dark at this point. What would you like to roll? Give me, give me another search roll. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I need to stop taking these rolls uh, it, because I'm going to really want to need one later and I'm not going to get it, but that's a pass. Okay. Um, there's nothing unusual. Mm -hmm. It's basic sort of more cat stuff. Uh, he is looking at different cat trees. And the only other thing is that he has a couple of news articles open about the uh, missing Pablo and just other news articles, but nothing, nothing about plants or anything like that. It's more just like, this is a story that he noticed and it happened to be open last time he was on here. Okay. All right, I guess I leave the, leave the room then. Okay. Police. Yes, me. You. All right. So how did your search roll go? Oh, uh, let me uh, roll that terrible stat for me. <clears throat> oh, that is a uh, deeply terrible uh, 92 of 40. So even the plus 40% Ooh. will save me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, they have a lot of toilet paper. Like, they're not going to run out of toilet paper. Ever. Oh, they're prepared. That's good to know. Yeah, especially, especially now, they're probably dead. They're never going to run out of toilet paper. Womp womp. Uh, who did I say next? I think I said Roger next. All right, here we go. That is a 78 on a 60. So I am going to go ahead and use uh, my plus 40. Or did we, were those fails to successes, were those across the whole party? Uh, I don't wait. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so were those uh, the one that was given earlier in the game? Uh, plus 40 to run one roll. And yeah. your next three failures become successes. successes. Okay, so this, this is my first failure. So okay. This is my first roll of the game. So I'm just checking them off. I made little check boxes for myself. Correct. All right. I, I'm doing what I can because I will lose track of everything. Okay, so yes. Yeah, so if that takes that fail, that would have been a 78 on a, um, on a 60 search roll, that would make it a success then. Okay, great. So what you notice, you're walking through the house and you're specifically looking for a sign of a struggle or something. Mm -hmm. It's very clean and it doesn't look like 
a cleanup done by somebody else. Like it doesn't look like someone was cleaning up a crime scene. It looks like these are a couple that are very organized and like to keep a clean house. Okay. And like around the attic or anything, like does it look like that's been disturbed at any point recently? Uh, kind of like a perimeter check. You pull it down and you go in and you look. It just looks like basic storage and everything is sort of pushed back towards the wall so it doesn't look like anything was pulled forward and used recently. Mm -hmm. um, are you... You said you're checking the back door. Yeah, like the back area. I'm kind of like doing like a perimeter check of like... Uh, yeah, like the back door, backyard, like in the crawl space kind of stuff. Like the, the stuff that would normally get overlooked when you're just looking through someone's things. Okay. So on your way to the back door, you do go through the kitchen and uh, the sink smells weird. Like it's, uh, there's been stuff sitting in it for a like, little while like the sink itself like dishes and stuff if not or like down in the drain if i approach do you approach i'll approach <laughs> <laughs> you approach and there's um some dishes but not a lot uh there is like it you can tell that there is a garbage disposal in the sink so there really shouldn't be anything like in there in there but okay. that is where the smell is coming from can i turn on the water yes that was a pause you turn uh. on the water well, I mean, yeah. So turn on the water so that if it if there is something in the sink, it flushes it down. And besides, depending on how long these guys have been gone, have they paid their water bill? Okay. So with that in mind, uh, you do notice above the sink, there's a really super cute, uh, like a sort of blackboard. And the reason it's over the sink is so that they can clean it easily and the dust uh -huh, doesn't get uh -huh. like everywhere. Uh, but it's like a to-do list. And the date is uh, last Friday. So today it's like 3 a.m. Friday morning. And so this was the Friday of the week before. Yes. And when this one, they did not have an article. And did we have a date that they went missing from the... Let me check the info file. Did we have a date in the info file of when they were reported missing? Um, uh, no, it's just they were the most the recent. most recent. Okay, so the most recent, which would have been within the past week. Mm -hmm. You do know that they were reported missing uh, two days after the date on the blackboard. Reported missing two days after blackboard. But that was by uh, a coworker. A coworker. So the coworker wouldn't have known that Shane was missing until Monday. Right. So they could have gone missing Friday Over the week. night. Friday night, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. They seem the like the type of people who would update that chalkboard fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I've got that across. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. Um, all right. So you, you have a date. You notice that while you're bending over the sink, uh, you turn on the water. Water comes out. Starts going down the drain. And it functions as it should. Wow, crazy, I turned it off. Okay. I didn't know if we were gonna have sink ghosts or something. R Milo was ready. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then you start moving, continue to move towards the back door, at which point I'm gonna go over to Robin Hood. You are checking out the couple's 
bedroom. Describe to me what you do, please, and give me a search roll. Okay, uh, I got a 31% success on the search roll. And uh, basically what he's going to do is going to uh, start with looking under the bed. Then he's going to look at the stand and basically see if he can pick up any clues in terms of... Your audio cut out? Can you hear me now? Yeah, he's gonna basically um, look under the bed and also look under the uh, into the drawers at the uh, nightstands that are on side of the bed and basically look and see if he can pick up anything in terms of any journaling or anything to that nature that could be helpful in uh, pulling together clues as to uh, what's going on. Okay. So you you look around and you notice that the. Uh, the bed is unmade and like maybe one of the drawers is pulled open like someone went in to get a shirt or something but what really draws your attention while you're standing there it's quiet there's just the, the five of you and you're not making a whole lot of noise what you notice is a sort of muffled whispering sound. Uh, give me a perception roll, please, or alertness. All right, that's a uh, fifty-four percent uh, success. Out of what was it? I'm sorry. Uh, out of 50. So you're really close. Um, you mm -hmm. have up success to failure or a failure to success. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bonus. Thank you. Um, so you realize that it's coming from a window by the head of the bed and you go over and look and you see like a sort of vine that seems to have worked its way over the window glass. And you hear that muffled whispering. Like, it it almost sounds like someone left a TV on in another room, but you know they didn't. And okay. you're leaning, go on. Oh, uh, you can keep going. You're leaning forward and there's a red flower pressed against the glass on the vine. And you could almost swear there's a face in it? Almost. Uh, can you give me a sanity roll, please? How'd, how'd you do? Uh, it's an eight. An eight? Yeah. All right. So that's under your sanity. You managed to uh, rationalize it. It's like, that's, it's just a plant. And you lean back and do not take any sanity loss. It's weird, but there's nothing there. And we're going to move to Rudy, who is specifically looking for weird plant stuff. Weird plant stuff and like entry points, which I, but I also believe Roger has mostly covered that. Yeah, Roger was covering the entry points and is moving towards the back door. Okay. Uh, are you going around the outside of the house? Are you just looking at all the windows and doors inside? What are you doing? Um, she's going to start with the windows and doors inside, um, looking for that weird plant shit. 
so most of the uh windows and doors and stuff they're you know locked um nothing unusual uh, when you get to the bedroom that you know uh, robin hood is checking out do you go in or do you just say oh he he's already got that um she's still going to check every single area for plants regardless of another person uh, so then you would have first noticed the fern in the office mm -hmm. where Rowan is. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go to the bedroom and you see uh, Agent Robin Hood leaning forward and looking at this vine on the window and then leaning back. And uh, why don't you describe to me what this interaction looks like between you two. You got anything, Robin Hood? This vine that I'm looking at, it's something about it seems off. It's quite, seemed like it's almost working to me. And for a split second there, I thought I saw a uh, face in one of the flowers that were flowers that are blooming on it and I'm not so sure but I feel like this vine that's leading up could possibly be something that could uh, basically get us to where we need to go in terms of knowing exactly what happened to uh, the couple okay um, uh, Rudy kind of mentally prepares herself and goes over to the vine um, to see if she can see the face that Robin Hood saw. Um, she specifically, and uh, she's at this point kind of jumping to conclusions, but she wants to, if she can see the face, she wants to see if it's similar to any of the people who have gone missing. Okay. So, You've had this pointed out to you. I don't need a perception roll. Okay. At least not for the face. Okay. Uh, you're leaning forward and you hear that muffled whispering. You're looking at this flower and you definitely notice that face. And you start to sort of hear a whispering sound and you're leaning forward and leaning forward you don't realize quite how close to the glass you're getting as you're trying to listen mm -hmm. and it just says just a little red just give me a drink it won't hurt just help us take root and it just kind of whispers that Oh, okay. That's fine. So, um, sorry, I never auditioned for Little House of Horrors. I'm good. Um, <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors. Um, and there's glass. Like there's glass between you and the plant currently. Yes. Cool. She's gonna keep it that way. <laughs> um, and you, you. So you said like I definitely like see you a face. Yeah, it does not. It does not look like anyone that you know of missing. Okay, so face flower, cool. Wants blood, double <laughs> cool. Um, to root. And that's ah, rooted in blood. I get it now. <laughs> That's the name of their shoe. Um, she uh, turns her her head to uh, look at Robin Hood. Um, this is gonna sound weird. Any any way I try to explain this. Um, so yes, you did see a face. Um, the plant is alive and wants some blood. So. Um... 
I would like you both to make sanity rolls because you've just vocalized that, Rudy. And uh, Robin Hood, you're now having to <laughs> try to reprocess what you've already rationalized. Right. That one was a 57. Out of? Ah, uh, 50. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, and we're doing sanity, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, that's a 54 out of 74, so I'm, I have succeeded. Okay. Um, how much you've succeeded is up to me, really. Yes. Uh, I need a D, I need a D6. So, Robin Hood, please lose four sanity. And Rudy, lose two. Oh, cool. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you do from here? Um, it's an excellent question. Uh, <laughs> um, So she'll go to the living room and kind of wait uh, for everyone to finish up what they're doing, uh, since this all kind of happens simultaneously um, with the other people's checks. Um, and uh, once we're all gathered up, she will um, have that um, fun conversation. And uh, oh. Robin is going to follow to that to the living room also. Though, I'm having a hard debate with myself if I should go outside to the vine and like see if there's anything else. But then I feel like I'm just going to get like captured by a vine person and never seen again. <laughs> did you just say outside? Uh, yeah, I did just say outside. Why? Why don't we go back to Roger? Who was? was did you just say outside? <laughs> it was nice to meet you, Roger. Well, I, you know what? <laughs> okay. Oh, Roger. Go home, uh, Roger. Roger sure looks like plant food to me. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, I've come across some of the devil's lettuce before, and I'll take it out too. So, like, plant to plant. Yeah, but you don't, Roger doesn't know that this is there. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I screwed. Yeah, I'm all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. So uh Roger has made his way out onto like what kind of setup? Do they have like a back porch? Like a back like do they have, a little like, patio with like a patio area? Like a little fire pit with a cover on it. Uh, yeah. He has one of those little tactical flashlights where it can be, because he's very proud of it. He's got a tactical flashlight so that it can change from like regular bright light to like infrared to uh, uh, UV. And so he's got it just on the regular setting right now. And he's just shining a light around the general area around the back patio, looking under the deck kind of deal if that's the case. Okay. And and what does he see? <laughs> um, I'm trying to decide how much time we got left in the show. I can make it. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, I also want to go ahead and say that I'm using my group hope bonus, and I've healed up my sanity to max. Cool. <laughs> Um, I think that what I, I'm telling you what you see because I'm the I'm the handler. You are the handler. This is how this works. Handle me. Sorry. <laughs> I, just I, proceed. You're peering under the deck. 
and you you see uh, the bottoms of some shoes. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, some greenery wrapped around those shoes. Okay. Uh, he's gonna be a little startled at that and because he would been bending over to look underneath there and now he's probably gonna actually take a knee about how far underneath the deck are the shoes Fair, like um, if you reached in you might have to go to your, your elbow but you're not gonna have to crawl under okay I'm not gonna have to uh, all right. Well, he he would do that. He might like lean like down a little bit with the with his arm on the ground, and then just kind of reach in, but just like jiggle the shoe. Hello, are you okay? All you've got is dead weight. Oh God. <laughs> so all right, okay. Um. Are there any identifying features, like anything? Of the shoe? Of the leg attached to the shoe? Um. Like, does the, like, I don't know if it was in a situation where, like, are are they, like, nice shoes, like the people had inside? Like, they're, they're, like, nice shoes? Um, they're... Yeah. I mean, okay. They're, they're yeah. Not, I'm just not, like, trying to see, like, is it a shoe? All right. Yeah. Like, trying to make sure it wasn't like the gardener's shoe, but it's like these folks. Like, it's like they're nice little moccasins or something that they've got yes, on. They, they're oh, like okay. nice. They're like nice house shoes. Okay. Great. So, nice house shoes. It's definitely one of the dead folks from here. Great. Is that the only thing that I see under there as I swipe my flashlight around? Uh, your flashlight sort of catches on one of like a sort of spot of red and you Mm -hmm. swivel it back and it looks like a a red flower like a deep blood red and you train your flashlight on it and Mm -hmm. it's looks like it's sort of coming out of the bottom of somebody's wrist like maybe out of a vein. Okay. Wait, like so, like I see someone's wrist there as well. Like I see the yeah, like yeah. The whole. Okay, great. All right, cool. So we see the whole body. Cool. Um, like you're looking up the body. Essentially. Oh, okay. All right. Does that um, make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a. Uh, Definitely, he's just gonna be like, oh, jeez. Um, and I, I think for a quick moment before he looks back down there, he's gonna stand back up and kind of do another quick like perimeter check, like right around where it is before he's gonna go and look back underneath there again, trying to get closer to the flower. So. Those are two steps, I know, but I first want to look around to, like, the immediate area one more time. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm glad you do that. I really am. Because I don't need to roll anything. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> swivel your flashlight over, and, like, the first time you swivel it, you, you notice a shape. And then you're like, what? There, I don't think there was a tree there. And you swivel it back. And it wasn't a tree. Uh, it looks like the general shape of a person. Uh, and in the dark, it... You know how, like, a weeping willow has those thick branches that just sort of hang down? Mm -hmm. You're getting that feeling, but it's not branches. It's, like, greenery. 
that is sort of coming out of different portions of skin in weird places. So, you know, that's pretty creepy. Uh, the fingers have sort of long, mossy reaches from them now. And uh, you train your flashlight on the face, and you're pretty sure that it looks like that hater's pro, like the pick from that hater's profile earlier. Moss man. <laughs> Moss man. Yeah. Um. Uh. Do I get a reaction moment or no? Y- you will. <laughs> I succeeded everything tonight. I know you. But I I will give you a chance to do one action. One. Uh, The doctor's dying. (laughs) I know. I'm like... (laughs) Okay, 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 okay. So... I feel like running is the right action to take here. (laughs) But but this is Roger we're talking about. Maybe yelling, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yelling. Yeah, I think like a... Yeah. Please. So is a yell? Can I yell and run at the same time, Handler? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's gonna be the thing, then yeah. All right. I'll just do. It's the Mothman. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And Let like, me specify, mm-hmm. it's Moss Man. Moss Man. M-O-S-S. I, did, I, did I say Moth? I said Moth. I said Moss. It's yeah, Moss, Ma- Moss Man. Man or Moss Man is a queer icon. Do not besmirch no, but listen, the good listen. name. No, no I, maybe he was excited. Like, <laughs> no. Just like, oh my, just like, guys, Moth Man, Moss Man. I keep Moth Manning. I keep Moth Manning. <laughs> I mean, Mothman's awesome. This guy is not awesome. Yeah. And during Pride? Uh, yeah, so that's what he yells. And he's going to try to reach for his gun, at least. And it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so before I tell you what this uh, this thing does, uh, what does everyone inside do when you hear that? Um outside yeah i'm gonna run outside uh rudy grabs her k-bar from her like back holster what is a k-bar it's a knife it's a military combat knife okay um and uh, uh, bolts out the back door yep and uh robin agent robin is gonna go ahead and uh run out the door also see what the commotion is about cool uh so y'all are pouring outside preparing for some kind of Shitstorm in a suburban backyard. Mm-hmm. At like three, three in the morning, four a.m. Four a.m. From- now. Yeah. Um, woo! Neighbors are gonna Maybe love us. Peering over the fence with just a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn queers are throwing a party. <laughs> They're yelling about moss over there right now. <laughs> is that, is that I- slang for something? <laughs> Are they smoking the marijuana? <laughs> Indoctrinating your kids with her herbs, my friends. Botany at its best. Moss hyster- hysteria. Oh, Drea. Oh, Drea, you fucking treasure. <laughs> All right. So this, uh... Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into this, is this actually what they meant by reefer madness? No. No. Sadly, Man, there, is, there is no smoking of anything related to this specific thing. We could okay, put what? it on fire. I'm I mean, there's a fire dead. pit. I'm gonna be dead inside of it and shortly, so... Alright. 
But you guys are starting to run out the door. And this um, botanical monster, uh, it doesn't need to run towards you so much as just the flowers under the deck uh, have wrapped themselves around your ankles and they yoink ya to the floor, uh, which is actually a, a lawn which is not great for you right now. Uh, not gonna lie. Um, but it, they don't drag you under the deck. Uh, actually, no, that's a better idea. Yeah, they do drag you under the deck and um, it starts to drag you under the deck and that's the point at which the rest of your party comes out. Because I'm, I'm assuming you're fighting it as it's oh, you under the deck. Yeah, so like if it's grabbed me, because I know that I was trying to, I was going to reach for my gun. And if I was able to at least get my gun out, I was going to try to start aiming at the standing moss man. And if I get yoinked, I'll probably try to roll over and just shoot aimlessly under the deck. If I am allowed such things. Um, I think so, and I just want to give a shout out to our lovely rating party at 35. Yeah! Yeah! Wow. Thank you, Todd Moon Bounce. Thank you so much. Welcome, Raiders. Oh my gosh, we Welcome. have exactly 69 viewers. 69, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and during Pride? Wow. Hell yeah. Smoking a monster. <laughs> this, this is how we win Pride, y'all. 69 viewers on a Pride stream. Yay! <laughs> All right. Can't get any gayer than that. So you're you're getting pulled under the deck. You're pulling oh, yeah. out your gun, and I see this as a very sort of strange, strange, stranger things type of moment in my head. Mm -hmm. You're getting pulled under the deck. You've got your gun out, and you vanish from the side of the camera that's clearly just pointing down at the top of the yard. And everybody runs out, and. They don't see you, but they definitely see uh, this viney, verdant thing that's standing in the yard, staring at where you were. And uh, that's when we you get him screaming. You heard his scream. Is he? Are, are you still screaming? Am I? Act I would imagine that I am actively like. All Making sounds screaming. of surprise? Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at least in surprise and probably fear. Uh, yeah. Give me a firearms check. All right. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. What is this? Why was that like that? Did I mess this up somehow? Did I lose points? I trust you, Mayor. All right. I was just trying to, like, I know what I put there originally, and it was a different I'm gonna put it. I was like, did anybody change my stuff? I did not. Okay. All right. Uh, that is a 16 on a 40. Oh, thank you, dice. Great. Oh so you do not shoot your leg. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you do manage to shoot and. I know that when I'm picturing what happens when you fire a gun is probably much more cinematic than what happens in real life. Mm -hmm. However, you point the gun down, you fire, and you uh, manage to hit another one of these mossy monsters uh, that's underneath the deck and kind of laying over these corpses. You <laughs> hit it, something like a shoulder jerks back a little bit, and uh, then it's going to start scuttling towards you. But before that happens, 
I want to see what everybody else does. Uh, as the one in the yard, you know, uh, let's see, who would have gotten out here first? Uh, everybody give me a d10 roll, please. Except Mayor. Mayor is occupied. I get a zero. <laughs> Nine. Uh, seven. Come on, roll a d10 instead of d100. <laughs> I rolled a six. I, I also rolled bad. What did you roll, Elise? 81 now that I rolled, not d1000 and d100. <laughs> Wait, d100 or d10? I asked for a d10. d100. Oh, okay. D10. Oh, uh, seven. oh, I, I missed oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I didn't have a seven. <laughs> I have a six. And Rudy... All right. So, Robin Hood, you make it out first. What do you do? All right, so uh, does Robin Hood spot the uh, monster or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, he's going to go ahead and... Uh, Take out his uh, gun, and he's gonna want to take a shot at it. Okay, roll me firearms. That is a three. A three. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, where do you want to have hit it? Uh, I like to try to go for the head if possible. If I can make out exactly uh, where its head is at, it's humanoid enough that yes, you can make out where the head would have been if it was human. Uh, so you got a good headshot in. It doesn't really seem to care though, um, as it starts, you know, trundling towards you and there's that sort of more of those red flowers you start to sort of see them pop up in the yard uh next out is rowan what do you do um so i i take in obviously everything that's going on is there can you remind me is there a shed back here there is a shed I didn't say there was, but um, I did describe their lawn as immaculate, so there would be something to keep that those items in. So I will say there is some kind of small shed. Is the shed unlocked from what I can tell? You can't really tell from here, like the door isn't open and it's at the other side of the yard. Can I run for the shed? Yeah. Especially while this is, the, the monster is focused on being sh shot. Because, you know, that, that takes up a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, Rudy, what do you do? So Rowan's going towards the shed. Mm -hmm. Is that what I just heard? Okay, yes. uh, he like, he, and now, cause I think I'm Rudy now. Uh, <laughs> uh, she yells out like, get some weed killer or <laughs> like something like that um and uh in the in the style of her good friend john um she's gonna go rambo uh on this uh plant creature okay uh roll me uh firearms uh no she's coming out with her gay Oh, like her, 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 uh... I'm gonna stab it. I'm gonna chop off some vines. Yeah, help it. Uh, let me see. So that's, uh... Is that um, me melee? Give me a melee weapon roll. Is there? Oh, I didn't realize that melee was... That is a was skill. A... Oh, I always just thought it was under unarmed. Damn. <sighs> Hold on. I, need to I mean, turn. to me, a knife is a melee oh, yeah, no, weapon. Oh, no, completely. I okay. just, I didn't even realize that melee was on this freaking sheet. Because I, I 
I did not look well enough. Anyway, sorry. I had to turn down the awesome epic music um, that was like thumping in my noggin over here. Um, okay. So, um, do I have to pre say that I'm going to like to use that like 40% or something like that? No. Nah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to roll, see how it goes. Yeah, people spent good money on those. I'm I'm gonna okay. see you can use them if you need them. Okay. Uh so I, I rolled high. Uh so I'm gonna use that 40% to make it a success. Um at um 70 for that melee check. Um so there. All right. So you succeed. Um It's just been shot. It's moving quickly towards Robin Hood, which also means that it's moving closer to you, which is good because it helps you close the distance faster. Okay. Uh, and what did you roll in your melee? Uh, seventy on the dot, which would have uh, with that plus forty would have been seventy, so it matches. Okay, so you make the success uh, barely. Yeah. Uh, Delta Green doesn't have like the hard success and the extreme success. Unless you roll doubles or a one, essentially. Yeah. Um, so you you do slash at it and your blade connects. Uh, uh, the K bar does have a damage roll. If you okay, can you give that there. to me? Yeah. Three. Okay. Uh, one of the and it Mines. has an armor piercing if the plant has armor. It doesn't have armor. Uh, <laughs> like, it has bark skin, doesn't it? No. <laughs> this is this is more like a green gushy like, monster. <laughs> um. So what what you get is a sort of green spray in your face as you cut into it, which you. She doesn't open her mouth That's at all. <laughs> She's like, mm -mm. <laughs> Elise. So I think uh, Elise rounds the corner, sees the plant monstrosity, uh, and uh, just goes into triage mode, like, okay, it's a plant. Got it. Uh, reaches into her bag, pulls out rubbing alcohol and a lighter. <laughs> And I would like to douse the roots, or the quote-unquote roots of it, with rub and alcohol and light it on fire. And since it's moving, I'm going to say that will be difficult, and you're going to need some kind of description or plan before I let you roll anything, and it might take you a turn or two. All right, uh, I, I will. I will. I will pivot to my favorite other strategy then. Uh, she's just gonna like rub out a piece of cloth and stuff the rag into the rubbing alcohol bottle and Molotov it and just throw. Great. Um, I'm gonna say that you, you man, I'm trying to keep in my head straight like how much, how long it takes everyone to do these specific things. I'm gonna say that it takes you like you can prepare the Molotov cocktail and have your lighter going, but you're gonna have to wait till the next turn to see if you successfully throw it. In that case, I like to like keep. Well, I'm not. Well, as much as I can tell where it's located, I'll I'll stay back then since I'm gonna hold this anyway. Yeah, which is actually probably a good thing because uh, Rudy is in close combat with it currently. Yeah, and she will say like, "Please step back. Like, I'm gonna burn this thing." <laughs> okay. And then we're back with uh, Roger. Ah. Under the <laughs> um. Okay, so I've been shooting at the thing. Would we have to? Would I have to like count how many of these I'm shooting? Are you gonna? Is that a thing needed for this? Um. You mean keep track of your bullets? Yeah, that's the mean. That yes. look, look, this is very East Coast Lake for me. I'm still, I'm a sleepy bean. But uh, I appreciate you being here. 
I'm happy to be here. This is great. This is, I think, if I die, which will be very shortly. Or when I die, which will be very shortly. Also going along with the thing. Um, this will be my I do need time. you to count your bullets, yes. I do. Okay, cool. So I think I've shot once at least, maybe twice. I'm aware of one. Okay, cool. So then I would like to shoot it twice. Okay. Like to shoot it in the head again. Or try to aim for its head since I hit it in the shoulder. Okay. Give me a firearm. Oh, that's a nine. Hell yeah. Yay. All right. So that's a nine. Do I hit it? Yes. Okay. So then I get to roll a d10 for damage. Is that going to... I'm going to do it. It doesn't gonna matter. Seven points of damage on Seymour? I mean, that's a solid hit. And it's scuttling towards you over the uh, corpses of this once lovely couple. Yeah. Uh, and wrapping one of its appendages around your ankle to finish pulling you further into the deck. So it's like you got the shot lined up perfectly. Yeah. And it goes right into the face. There's a lovely, gory green splatter. Blech. The head is mostly gone, but that doesn't stop it from pulling you closer. And um, as it pulls you closer, it also continues to scuttle up you so <laughs> that it's now on top of you and you have this, the stump uh, sort of in your face, which is gross. Yeah, no, I'm definitely uh, screaming and kicking and writhing and elbowing at this thing just to yeah, try to not, not let a it whole, get too much. Oh, there's not a great range of motion for being stuck under a deck under a monster. Yeah, but whatever kicks I can get in, I, I'll kick him, sir. Okay. Uh, Robin Hood, you shot the one in the yard. Rudy is in close combat with it. What do you do, Robin Hood? Okay, uh, so does Robin Hood hear Rudy underneath the deck? Roger, yes, you would hear Roger. Oh, Roger, yes. Uh, okay, so he's actually going to go ahead and um, peek underneath the deck just to confirm that it is uh, Roger. And uh, once he confirms it's Roger, he's going to uh, yell to Roger, hold on, I'm coming to get you. And he's going to actually, is the kitchen lead out to the yard or how far is the kitchen away from? The kitchen, the yourself. back door went through the kitchen, so yes. Okay, uh, Robin Hood is going to actually go ahead, head inside and see if he can find a uh, cleaver or anything sharp to basically begin sharpening at uh, the vines that kind of have uh, Roger, R is pulling Roger in. Yeah, you, very organized, you find by the sink a nice big block with a lot of big sharp knives you grab the one that looks the largest and you head back out to the yard. Uh, Rowan, what do you do? Okay, so I'm at the shed, right? Is the shed locked? Is it unlocked? Give me a luck roll. I'm asking you to do it. I'm not doing that. It's fine. I, I think I prefer it that way. Um, luck. Oh, luck isn't a in this one, is it? Roll me a percentile. It, it, luck, is. It, luck is. It's just it's just 50-50. Yeah, okay. 100, 50-50. Yeah. You either succeed or you don't. Thank you. I want to get, on this do I want, on, the, on this do I want to, I want to go low, right? Below 50 then? Is that how that would work? Yes. Okay. Can I use one of my re-rolls? Yes. Okay. That passed. That was a 20. Cool. Okay. The shed is open. You okay. yoink it open. Uh, what do you um, do? Um, if it's in there, I would like to grab a pair of hedge clippers and a, a sod, uh, like a sod hoe. Like a sod, you know, for those side yards. It's a sod hoe. I don't know what that is. It's the sharp ho it's the sharp hose that you would use to cut into your grass to like cut meat vines. They're oh, very I understand. Okay, so you throw open the door, you look in, 
You see what you want. You step into the shed to get it. And that's when you notice this, um, it looks like a plant, but it's, uh, really, really big. Like it's, and you can't believe you didn't notice initially, but there's this smell of rot Mm. and mold and just really gross, awful things. Mm. Delicious. Um, and the there's enough light from you know the surrounding houses that are now turning on their lights after there've been two gunshots um, that you can see into the shed, and you can see the what I'm calling the green one uh, sitting in the center of the shed. It's a a large, this is gonna sound weird. It's a large moss covered. Like, you know, when you go into a swamp and there are those big ass plants, I don't know what they're called, but they're big and they're just kind of grody looking and they're in the middle of the water. Yes. Yeah, it's not duckweed, it's something. Mangroves? No, not a mangrove. Mangroves are pretty. Okay. Uh, but like like duckweed maybe something like duckweed okay and it's that but it's it's massive maybe the size of uh seymour halfway through the movie and it's pulsating and at this point behind you you hear high-pitched screams as the red flowers that were cropping up in the grass and under the deck open up and shriek. Son of a bitch. I bet I need to do a uh, sanity roll, don't I? Yes, please. Okay. How, so I rolled a 40. I don't know if that's good enough. I need to- What is your sanity? I'm trying to find that right now. Uh, You want the the current number. It's the what number? Current. Sanity is under derived attributes. Top of the sheet. Top of the sheet. I was looking at it. Right under the statistics. So I see- Hit points, willpower, sanity. Yeah, oh, I'm looking literally right at it. Uh, sanity, yes. My sanity is a 40 and I rolled a 40. Okay. Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, lose five, please. Of my sanity? Yes. Okay, so that would make me a 35, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so the number underneath that breaking point, what number is that? 32. Oh, cool. Let me know if you hit 32. Cool, 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 cool. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Do do I manage to grab any of these tools? Can I get the hell out of here? Or am I kind of somebody's, like, lunchbox? (laughs) Um, You manage to get in the shed far enough to grab one of the tools, but I'm gonna say that at this point, you're rooted to the spot, like not literally, but like you're, you know, what the hell is happening? Um, And we're gonna move to Elise, uh, who was preparing, no, not Elise, Rudy, who was in close combat with the plant monster in the yard. Rudy? I was waiting for like Ben to talk or something like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, I thought you said Elise first. Oh, whatever. I did. I misread my list. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was just like, uh huh, uh huh. I was like waiting for Ben to, to say something. Okay. Um, 
So there's half of me that wants to like just tell us all to like nope the fuck back to the car <laughs> and like live to fight another day. Um because uh, we were we were trying to find why these people were missing. You were trying to find the people. Yeah, well, these people are dead. So, or at least one of them is underneath the patio. Uh, um, Roger's still underneath the patio. Yes. And Robin Hood has run back inside. Cool. Okay. Um... Uh, so at this point, um, Rudy is going to suggest a tactical retreat and trying and will then attempt to get Roger out from underneath the patio. Okay. So how do you decide to go about doing that? Um... Is there a particular vine that is potentially attached to Roger that she could, like, yank? Yeah, but none you can see. Uh, okay. Roger was pulled under the deck feet first. Cool. Um, so how to get to him, you're going to have to essentially get on your belly. Cool. Uh... <laughs> this is going to suck. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, I will um, get on my belly to try to rescue Roger. And army crawl underneath this bitch. It was nice knowing you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure your minivan makes it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say you managed to get under the deck enough to see uh, this the uh, one of the plant monsters on top of Roger Pinky. Sort of leaning green blood on him Pinky. Uh, has know. he inhaled said green blood I mean he was screaming so I'm assuming that there has indeed been green blood in his mouth he hasn't gotten around to reaction to that yet though Pinky. got it Pinky. Uh, but, Elise, this means that you now can safely throw the Molotov cocktail at the monster without killing anyone else. That's, that's, that's what I was reassuring. I do, I have a follow-up question, though, before I do that. Can yeah. I see the really big one in the shed now that the door is open? Yes, because there's lots of lights on and you can hear sirens. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, how close is Rowan to the shed? <laughs> um... Uh, so, uh, Rowan was able to get into the shed. Rowan is in the shed, but she was able to cover that distance in the one turn. So I, it really, it depends on how well you roll. You could at least get the shed. If you want to get in the shed, you're going to have to move closer. Uh, I'm happy to throw it at the shed. It's gonna go up quickly, but it's oh, just calm down. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's it's gonna it's gonna ignite, but it's not gonna burn you immediately if I hit the shed. It's gonna smolder a little bit, like a freaking s'more. It's a little bit of singeing. Never hurt anybody. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. You're a doctor, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I also have I also have skill in biology. Okay. Uh, oh, good. I can spell good. Um, speaking of that, can I can I make a quick biology roll to determine if that the big one's like connected to these, and maybe if I proverbially cut off the head, I'll you deal can with. Make a biology or a cult roll. I'm gonna go with biology. <laughs> Weirdly enough, a position has no occult. That is 49 of 60. Yeah, you want to kill that thing. 
All right, I will throw my uh, makeshift rubbing alcohol Molotov at the shed then, please. Okay. Um, throwing. I have no clue what skill. <laughs> um, there is. There's no demolitions. Oh, there is. Yeah, there Wait. is demolitions, but that I have. That's. That's mm. a more specific thing. Yeah. I, I would almost want to call it unarmed. What what are what are other things? Uh, yeah, I because there's no throw. So. No, there's I don't I don't want to do this to myself because my strength is not great. Uh, it could just be the, a flat strength throw. <laughs> God suggests um, athletics if they're throwing it. That works for me. Give me an athletics Yay. roll. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, one of the, I think, four left of success to failures, or failure to successes we have. Okay. Yes, because I, I rolled a 52 of 30. So I would like you to succeed, please. <laughs> okay. Please and thank you. So you light the cocktail, you hit the shed, shed starts going up. Um, Roger, you're under a plant monster. You hear shrieking behind you like you know like in the main yard um I and can, can i knit? yeah yeah I was, oh you go ahead because i i'm gonna try something futile but go ahead <laughs> uh the stuff is getting in your mouth uh, and your your eyes and you you feel it start to sort of wiggle into your ears too like it, it's just kind of like in your sinus cavity and it's funky and your entire all you can smell is rot and that sort of rotund smell of decay and the veritat richness of death ah those are good words thank you uh yeah, I, uh, he is gonna just do whatever sort of, like, strength and get the heck out that he can. Like, whatever he's got in him, like. Yeah, give me athletics. Actually, first give me sanity. Oh, okay, yeah. That I'll makes know. sense. That <laughs> You're under a plant works. monster that's bleeding decay into your yeah, face. Yeah, uh, I got a 49. Out of? Uh sanity uh out of 60. we want to roll low on that right you do want to roll yes yay all right cool uh now you can give me athletics okay but you do lose uh, six you lose one sanity but you successfully uh, what are you trying to do i'm trying to get out of the thing's grasp i'm trying to to like do the opposite of a grapple. So you're trying to shove it sort of off you? Yeah, trying to like shove it off me. I want to get back. I want to do my best to get out from underneath it and this deck. All right. So you succeed at shoving this off of you enough that mm -hmm. uh, Rudy will probably be able to get a good hold of you on her turn. Fantastic. Robin Hood, you have that knife. Yep. So uh Robin Hood is gonna go ahead and head on uh back out. And uh basically come to the shed where he spots uh Rudy and Roger. And he's gonna be and he's gonna ask both of them. So what can I do to help get you two out? So they're under the deck? Oh under the deck, that's a shit. So, uh, is how far is um, Rudy from the actual edge of the uh, deck? Uh, like, is she is her legs like almost sticking out to a point where if I was to grab onto him, I can um, pull him out on the next turn? Um, I would say that you could get a hold of Rudy, and once Rudy has a hold of Roger, you can like chain pull Roger out. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with that. 
okay. work at 3 a.m. at Denny's. Roger's, Roger's okay with anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay down a knife on the deck and um, grab a hold of uh, three legs for, and just wait until she uh, grabs a hold of Roger. Okay. I like this plan. This is good. Rowan, you're in the shed that with is- the green one, and, it's and the shed is on fire. Uh, I mean. And I have, I, I, I got the tools I, I wished for, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, recognizing that this is kind of a dire situation, can I just like, to make more, I guess at this point, what would make the most sense is to like use, not what I wanted the shears to use for, but can I use the shears as like a shiv and like stab this thing and then try to make it backwards? out with the the the, the sod hoe? 100%. Okay. So give me a melee weapons roll. Sure. I wanted to aim for the fleshy bits, but I feel like this thing is just entirely fleshy bits. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Um, oh, my melee is not good. Oh, my melee is very small. Okay, well, I have like 9,000 more good luck rolls. So we'll, we'll work this out. <laughs> By hook or by crook. Oh my god. How did I do that? <laughs> my melee is a 30. I got a 20. So I did it. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. I mean, dice gods. Dice gods. You, you know what that. it is? Um, just to, to talk about you right now. This is actually my patented uh, rosy dice that was made for me. Uh, it's really hard to see because my green screen keeps picking up on it. But uh, that's why they're doing so good tonight is because you made them. Oh. So they're very sharp. They are, they are pointy. Yes. I'm glad you like them. I really love them. Um, and evidently they love me too, because I've been doing phenomenal this whole game. Um, okay, so I got it. Right. So you stab it, um, like, you know, freaking out, stabbing this giant mm-hmm. monster in a burning shed. And it sort of explodes a bit like a pimple. Oh. When you pierce okay. it. Okay. <laughs> sure. And you get like a bunch of that green stuff thicker on me. Yeah. And it doesn't. You're hearing the flower. You're hearing the scream behind you that is the flowers. This doesn't scream so much as almost send uh, sound through you that you don't hear, but you feel. And at the center of it, as you're ripping into it, you see a color you can't describe. Is it florange? Maybe. Maybe. Mm All right. Uh, Rudy, you you have a hold of Roger. Uh, um, let Robin Hood know. <laughs> yeah, so like she like grabs both arms with her hands, like just linking them, and then she's just like she like look like screams over her shoulders, like go go go! I got him. Yeah, and I'm not gonna make you guys wait until you get back round. Uh, Robin Hood, you're able to pull your two companions out from under the deck. Which is awesome. Yep. Elise. Yes, me. Yeah, what do you do? Um, well, uh something on fire, mission accomplished. Um there's still there's still the one plant thing on the outside that's not under the deck, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I'll pull out a scalpel and try and do some precision cutting to make sure any vine, if there's any vines that run underneath the shed, or not, sorry, that shed, under the deck, that they're severed. Okay. 
Uh, give me a perception roll just to see how many you find. I see. Wait, this is terrible. Well, 17 to 20, I, I apparently I rolled well. <laughs> okay. Thank you, roll 20, guys. Cool, cool. So you see enough, you, you see a good number of the vines and you get down and you start doing that careful cutting like you would um, during surgery, like a very careful surgery. And as you do, the vines sort of shrivel uh, at the edges where you've cut and you feel pretty confident that you have like severed whatever connection. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our, our trio, uh, Roger, Robin Hood, and Rudy. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask the three of you, like, what do you guys want to do at this point? Uh, Roger is... The upper half of him is covered in grossness. Um, and he's got a lot of stuff, like, in his facial orifices. Um, maybe even kind of under his eyelids. Cool. Um, I'm going to like look at Robin Hood. I'm just like, don't get any of that on you. Um, at that point, um, she would actually like to put out, pull out her burner and text Handler Q um, that we are going to be in need of like immediate special. She like put special in quotation marks, uh, <laughs> medical attention, <clears throat> like Gove, Kansas. So rude, so rude. I'm, I'm standing right here. I'm just saying that maybe you are not qualified for the extraterrestrial. Um, I oh, had to- boss? Uh, Okay, do you wait for a response or do you just send it? And I should please... send it. Okay. If she answers, she answers. If she Ro doesn't, uh, I'm sure Roger will be fine. <laughs> Roger's having one of these moments of just like, Ugh, get, just get to the van. Ugh, God. So this is Delta Green. <laughs> this is not a touchy feeling game. The response you get back from Q is shoot him. Um, huh. It'll be okay. I just gotta, I just gotta wash this off. Oh God, it's everywhere. Get him to the van. The, the seats drop back. Lay him out. Uh, I'll yeah. examine him. Someone uh, else drive. Uh, I'm internally contemplating if I have a pistol on me or not. I have one in my hand. <laughs> you do have one. That would be really bitchy to like shoot you with your yeah, own gun. Shoot me with my own gun. Uh, he's like spitting and everything, and he's just like trying to like wipe it point, out of his ways to see. Rudy, you gotta things. imagine he's gonna get some of that on somebody else. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pose the question to the players, not the characters. Am I going to upset? Who am I going to upset if I, mean, I follow through you, with you, those you, know, you already know the answer for me. Yeah. <laughs> because I also have it on me, too. I don't know that. Oh, I'm very upset right now. <laughs> if we're just shooting people with the green stuff on them. Can't we just spray Roger with a hose and just call it a day? <laughs> How, how are you, uh, Rudo? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, someone has to want to tell a story. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Mare, my delightful cottagecore wife, who I love so much. I love wow. you too, a lot. So much. There's no one else I'd rather have shoot me. 
Okay, cool. Um, are we gonna do an opposed roll to get the gun away from Roger? Um, I think that I think that tracks. Can can we can like some of us nearby, for example, get like alertness rolls maybe to see what's about to go down? <laughs> If they can read my body language that I'm about to shoot somebody. Yeah, I, I would love to have a psychotherapy role. Be like, oh, there's, a, there's, a, someone's got murder in their, their eyes. I'm gonna say that Elise and uh, everybody other than Rowan, who is in the shed, uh, <laughs> can sort of read the body language closely enough to tell what's about to happen. But I need the supposed role first. Okay. Uh, are we doing athletics? Opposed athletics rules? Yes. Uh, okay, opposed athletics? That makes sense to me. Does anyone else have another? I mean, because I'm going for the for the gun. So it's, yeah. like, it's basically the equivalent of like a death. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. For, so for me, me and in Robin Hood, uh, it, I guess what kind of we're planning to do when we see like, oh, she's about to shoot. <laughs> All right, I'll roll my athletics. Oh. Or, I mean, you could do um, athletics or unarmed combat. I'll. I think I could do unarmed. Do unarmed combat. Um, I'm gonna keep my roll of eleven, which makes it a critical success. Damn. I would have had a forty on a forty, which would have just been <laughs> a regular success. So uh, Rudy does better. Rudy manages, like, gets gets the gun, but. Um, Robin Hood and Elise, you read the body language and you were pretty sure what was going to happen. So you see that Rudy has the gun. What do you do in response? I'm going to put my scalpel to her uh, carotid artery. <laughs> I swore an oath to do no harm and I won't let you do any harm right now. Harm none, but take no shit? Exactly. <laughs> uh, Robin is going to ask uh, so what is going on he's infected it's the greater good you don't remind me of your degree again me no, no, he's God, not no. God no God no <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not asking our, our himbo our himbo no. of the group that <laughs> It's not only the himbo, but they're also baby. <laughs> I'm baby himbo. My my point is already proven. Like he's losing brain cells by the second. I don't know what you want. No, sorry. Um, How about uh, it's a direct left. order, Doc? I could give a shit less. Uh, I swore a higher oath. Um, let me examine him first, and then we'll determine. If you want to take that disease back to your family, sure. Look, I have a daughter I need to get back home to. I don't really, I don't really plan on dying here. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill someone in cold blood. I won't, I won't stand by and watch someone killed in cold blood. Wait, wait, who are you talking about? And he's still rubbing it from his eyes. They're, 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 they're discussing killing you, Milo. What? No, I've got a dog. You can't do that. <laughs> a dog. I'm sure Hickory would love a buddy. It's fine. Who's Hickory? My dog. So while that discussion is that dilemma is <laughs> occurring, Rowan. Yes. You haven't inhaled any of this stuff yet. Good. Um, but it is on you. It is. You're in a burning shed. You. I'm getting out of the shed. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna say like instinct 100% kicks in on that, and you don't need to make a roll. You're in a burning building. You run out. That's what people do. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're covered in this green stuff, like mostly on your arms and your lower body. Mm -hmm. uh, Would my fabric, like the clothing I wear, deter any of that? Like it's it's not gonna wiggle towards any of your orifices. Let's put it that way. Okay. Considering your belly button, it's not going to go in your belly button. Ugh, oh, I hope not. Uh, okay. So I'm out of the shed. Is this stuff on me? Is it like moving with life or is it like 
Mm. Or death, moving with death. Is it moving with death? Um, <laughs> it smells awful okay. and it's wormy, but it's not like it doesn't have immediate purchase. So okay. it's not falling off you, but it can't keep a good hold of you. So if you were to like freak out or if, if you just pulled your, if you just stripped, you'd probably be fine. Take your time. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, if this stuff looks terrible, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off, I guess, my at least top layer, like, just gonna pull off what I have on the top of me. And I guess I'm there in a really nice bra. Cool. Or a terrible bra, who knows? I did wake up at 3.30 in the morning. It's whatever I grabbed from the floor of my bedroom, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so that's off. Still have my bottom stuff on. Ho mm -hmm. in hand. I look like a very like out of place, that farmer painting minus my husband. <laughs> just... So at this point, the uh, American Gothic, Jesus. Yes, I'm American Gothic, but queer. Yes, queer American Gothic, yeah, magnificent the, tableau. With a hoe in hand, I just can't with that sentence. Uh, and at this point, the cops arrive. So <laughs> y'all are arrested. Okay. Um. And stuff goes down off screen. Um, uh, I'm just dead. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, how alive am I? <laughs> Roger, you're dead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. I mean, like someone kills you. Someone from the agency kills you. There's oh. no way you're allowed to walk out of here. Like I like like I couldn't just like call someone and just be like, hey, I just can I come over no. and take a shower real quick? Like no. Oh, that's fair enough. Uh, I already reported your ass. I am going to haunt you, Gigi. <laughs> Do it. That's fine. I, I will enjoy the company. Okay. You can join John. Rowan is okay. They uh she went through like it was obvious enough that none of it had been consumed that you're fine uh everyone else just gets arrested and someone fronts your bond and everything ends up going away someone pulled in a couple favors you we're working for you know the x-files essentially and uh local authorities probably aren't happy about it but nothing goes on your records. So that's an experience your characters have now. And in closing, we have an individual entering the property, moving aside the uh, crime scene tape and caution, moving through the wilted red flowers, that have ceased screaming. The smell of decay is still present. Doesn't seem to bother them though. And our view just kind of follows like, you know, their legs as they walk through and it's focused on their shoes. And they get to the shed, which is pretty smoldered and the, the green one has burned been stabbed the vessel is dead but the overall goal well to get to the heart of the matter the person that's in the yard squats down and reaches in to the middle of the green one and down deep into the ground like up to the shoulder essentially and he can, they can do that because the root of it has rotted. And the camera focuses in on the spot where they pull their arm back out and it's covered in thick red viscous. And in their hand, they're holding what looks 
like a malformed heart that's rotted and a little festered and full of colors that don't exist. And that's where our story ends tonight. So, Wani is dead. Yay! This is dead. Wani is dead. Fun. Yeah. And I want to give everyone a chance to sorry, I saw something in chat. Not not related to me. Cool. Uh I wanna give like you know, everyone should give their outros and um maybe give a quick sort of what your character does when they walk out of the police station go by talk order please oh and tell tell everybody where they can find you next um a talk order i believe is me uh hey uh you can find me coming up next tomorrow behind the scenes producing uh game three of our week-long charity event um which is called Topaz Are Endless, run by Big Dad. Um, Gigi, after she uh, is let out, um, goes over to Milo's place, picks up his dog, brings it back to her house. <laughs> um, Roscoe <laughs> picks up Roscoe, brings him back home. He barks at every sound. I hope you're ready for it. Uh, Hickory's an old man and calms him down. Um, <laughs> um, and um, she continues on her day to day life, does a an ending like mission recap for Handler Q to go in the file about this fucking plant nonsense and waits for her next assignment now with two dogs I guess I'm in talk order after after Savannah so the body bag is nice and roomy um if I were to come back from the dead, I'd have plenty of wiggle room to stretch in it, but you know, I'm dead now. So, uh, that's what happens to me after I leave, but my name is there. I have had the joy of playing Milo, the one and only, the one time only Milo here. Um, you can find me on my own channel at oh hello mayor on twitch on twitter i do a lot of chill vibes games nothing like this on my channel <laughs> but <laughs> which is so funny um yeah and no this was a lot of fun i've never actually had a character die on whirlpool tales so this is this is really exciting for me uh must be fucking nice, Mary. Must be it's, fucking it's nice. My, it's my first. You die mine of all, all the time. <laughs> mine have, mine have like flown off on like the backs of eldritch horrors and stuff to Carcosa and things like, or if they've been disassembled like Essie. I don't think she's been disassembled. Either way, uh, she better <laughs> not have. Um, but yeah, so you can find me on Twitch and Twitter, uh, playing cool chill games. I like talking to people. I like meeting new people. So come and say hello. Uh, and yeah, and I love these people here. So come and watch the rest of the shows the rest of this week. Make some more people dead to join me in the green. I believe I am next. Uh, I am once again Aaron, and once again, you can find me at Great Two pretty much everywhere. Um, you can next find me tomorrow, two times actually, uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific, I will be over on my dearest Faze channel, Drea LeFay. Uh, we'll be doing the finale of Journey to the Savage Planet, and then I'll be back here at 5.30, my time, Pacific, uh, for Big Dad's chapter of the Delta Green Chronicle. Um, also, I, I've been informed there is a $40 bounty on my head now, and tomorrow is the last day I'll be participating in the one-shots this week. 
So, uh, y'all been really bad about killing me in general, so maybe you should try harder tomorrow? Maybe? <clears throat> Anyways, <laughs> after Wednesday, uh, you can find me Friday on my own channel, I'll be playing Final Fantasy VI, and then Sunday on my own channel again, playing uh, Spirit Fair for some sad feels. Uh, hi folks, uh, I have once again been Selkie. Uh, you can find me all over the internet as Rebel Selkie, except for that one place. And honestly, that one place is probably in the green. Um, and when I find someone who took my name, boy howdy, are you going there with it? Um, let's see. So, good news, bad news, good news. Uh, this is my only game for a while. Um, I'm hoping to jump back on and jump back in with my Warpily friends here sooner than later. Um, I miss you all. I miss streaming. I miss playing with everybody. Um, but if you want to follow me doing non Warpal Tale shenanigans, uh, I am a lead educator and small press curator of The Gathering Game, which is a LGS up here in Buffalo, New York. And you can follow me on Instagram at Gathering Game Buffalo and me and all my buddies. Uh, surprise, uh, it is graduation week up here in New York. So if you guys want to see what Little Miss Amber looked like in circa 2006 with the side swoop and everything, go check out my Instagram. Um, so I think that Rowan probably leaves that police station uh, a little more wary of the people that she works with um, it, or works for even. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, and I, I, I just think that they're just very, they leave, they get in their car, they probably cry for like 10 minutes and then like head home and figure out how to handle their trauma on their own time. Uh, you guys have been wonderful. All right, so uh, I'm next. My name is uh, JT Rudo. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me. It was, it was a great pleasure. You can find me anywhere on uh, Twitch, uh, uh, either my personal channel or the official Smite game channel, where I do uh, stream a couple times a week on there. And also, you can find me on uh, Twitter, JT Rudo. And, um, you know, find me here and there with uh, being involved in different TTRPG groups such as our uh, dungeons and dimwits. And we have some stuff that are currently in the works for next month that might drop. So, you know, be on the lookout for those uh, projects I'm going to be involved in. But uh, yeah, so after uh, Jared leaves uh, the police station, he basically has down to his uh, daughter's school where um, basically picks her up and they just spend the day at the park having father and daughter time and basically just, you know, enjoying and taking life in because it definitely couldn't have been the end of uh, Jared and not having that moment to spend with his daughter would have pretty much uh, crushed him. So they just spend father and daughter time together and they basically, you know, just spend quality time together and just have fun and really cherish life. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. And uh, it was great to raise money for a great cause. Uh, I realized I forgot my outro. <laughs> uh, so I think I think Elise like gets out of the police station, like smooths everything down. Uh, writes a very ornate resignation later letter to Delta Green with citing like I've sworn a Hippocratic oath I will not participate in innocence being executed in the field <laughs> and, and turns it in because I will be playing the same character tomorrow <laughs> you will or won't won't I will not be playing the same character tomorrow great then I don't feel bad at all uh, about this uh, you're, you're dead in a week Sounds good. <laughs> um, I would like to add that when uh, Gigi got home, um, she added another dog tag to her chain and it has Milo's name on it and it's right next to John's. Yeah, uh, Gigi's racking up some real trauma here. <laughs> I, thought we were playing I just have to, I just have to be here till Sunday. I, that that's all G, gg that's all she has to do all right uh thank you guys uh for joining us and watching us and all the raids and helping us raise money for rainbow railroads and fantastic and the rest of the week is all delta green tomorrow is my husband ben big dad walker running uh topaz are endless then you have eric who is an astoundingly good gm uh, the Delta Green. I'm, I haven't played with him yet, and I'm very jealous of anyone that has. 
uh, Eric is going to be running They Drink Young Blood. And then you have Ambrose, who is a total delight in absolutely every single way. And he is going to be running Metamorphosis. Then you have Salubri, uh, who is amazing. I, I adore her. She gives good hugs. Uh, she's going to be running The Ballad of Love and Hate. And then the finale is run by Tyler Eldridge Echoes. The Last Train to Cairo, which I will be playing in, and that'll close out our fundraiser. So keep tuning in and see what happens to some of our characters. Yes. Also, if you want to get in for the physical uh, giveaway of the evening and you haven't donated yet, even just $5 will get you on the prize wheel to get some (coughs) dice. Yes. Uh, Tonight, we're going to be giving away one of the chances to have a commission set made by me. I am on Duck Dice. Uh, You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as Odd Duck Dice. Uh, They're pretty. I like them. I put a lot of interesting things in them. I've put fake teeth in dice. I've put mini skulls in dice. I've put flowers, moss, foils, uh, liquid cores, cork, um, pretty much anything I can fit in a dice mold. You forgot the most important one, which is your love and patience. Oh, wow. Honestly, I mean, guys, go go ogle at these dice over at Instagram. Like, uh, it's like in on, on Twitter, it's so pretty. Over at Odd Duck Dice, I just, it's, it just, yeah. you need the serotonin, get the serotonin in your eyeballs with the sharp math rocks. Yes, yes. They are, they're very pointy. I have, but my camera keeps picking up on them, so you can't see them because they're so re- reflective and amazing. So, um, so, you know, donate, see if you might succeed at winning a custom set from me. Which means we'll work one-on-one to make a set for you. Uh, and we're also giving away a couple PDFs, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we got a, had a lot of active viewers tonight. So there's a, it's a, it's a hefty wheel to spin. Right. And you can also, uh, so like I said, a mod duck dice. But I am also Rosie Regular Size Mom, and you can find my personal Twitter at mom underscore sized, where you'll basically just see me tweeting about different things I'm doing RPG wise, retweeting stuff that other people who do awesome things are doing, like these folks. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's me. That's where you can find me. Uh, but Odd Duck Dice, my shop is opening on Etsy July 1st. So if you don't win your commission set here, you can probably snag a set on Duck Dice on Etsy July 1st. Okie dokie then. Um, Then I'm going to start off the rolls. Wonderful. Uh, Apparently, I found Big Dad's offer for a 35 donation to finish a drink. Uh, Drea just spiked it with a Big Dad and me birdies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, our winner of the commissioned set of dice is sort of sullied. Yay! Aww. Congrats. Three, one of our own. People are talking to me with my headset on and it's not working. Um, Okay, we shall now move on to the PDF portion of our giveaways. Uh, The first PDF giveaway will be both the Sabbat, the Black Hand, and the Black Hand playing the Sabbat. Whatever that means, because that was total gibberish to me. Ah, sounds good. I know what it means too, so It's really cool. It's great. Awesome. Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, Matihi <laughs> is our winner of the uh, Sabbat, the Black Hand, and Black Hand playing the Sabbat. We will be in touch. Um, our next winner is going to be winning a copy of the One Ring Core Rules.
Uh, Tis Cloud is the winner of our One Ring Core Rules. And last but not least, our last giveaway will be of Vassin, the core book. <laughs> and that will go to Twin Dad Twitches. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Hasn't he um, run that? <laughs> uh, Yay, congrats! <laughs> M. Changeling has run Vassin. Oh, that's one. <laughs> uh, what did I win? You won Vassin, my dude. <laughs> so, I will hand back over control to Handler Q. Yay. And tonight we close the file on that particular adventure. But I hope you join us for the rest of the week. Tomorrow night. We'll see uh, what. Savannah, Twin Dad's saying to run it again. <laughs> no. Uh, should I run it again, guys? Okay. Yeah, shout out if you, if you want in the chat. That way people in the chat can make sure they win things. I'm rolling again because it rolled Am Changeling. Oh <laughs> my god. Is it just picking people who've run the fucking game? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh Yum Mickle is our winner of the Bass and Core book. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, my will is haunted. Don't I don't know. <laughs> It's it's haunted by Roger yep. and Elise. Yeah. And 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 John. And John. And John. Yeah. Fine. So you know, keep watching. Tune in the rest of the week to see how many Delta Green agents die. And how many of us haunt the wheel. How many haunt the wheel by the end of the week? <laughs> That's all I got. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 He crime.